Are you comfortable there? Not to change here. So how you were sitting somewhere? Oh, you were the one sitting here. Oh, okay. I see. <laughs> Okay, good morning, friends. Good morning, Facebook friends. Good morning, we're here. HMT day two or three, is it three? Three, okay. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please, let's try to settle down. We're live. Thank you. Okay, so welcome once again our friends online. Welcome everybody. My name is Babu Shia. I'm the coordinator of History Makers Training. We are here at uh, the residence of Dr. Sunday Adalaja, continuing with our training. And uh, I personally <laughs> want to believe it's going on well. Is it going on well? Yeah. <laughs> so can you wave to the friends on Facebook? Hello. Yeah. Tell them that it's going on well. It's going on well. <laughs> okay, that's cool. <laughs> so, uh, personally, I want to appreciate uh, our speakers, um, DSA, and Dr. Um, um, uh, Arams Emmanuel Egibidi. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm saying it's not right. <laughs> And uh, also Professor Dr. Chris Imafidon that uh, will be having his section any uh, what, when it was, what is, when is his section? When is his section? Okay, Friday, I think, yeah, Friday. And it's also another section that I'm looking forward to. So our Facebook friends, I hope you're gonna stay with us. I believe that uh, you are really, really gonna learn something and it's going to be impactful. So we should all look forward to that uh, section as well. So, uh, we have to continue here before DSA comes in. I don't know how soon he's going to join us. But uh, yesterday, we, uh, we, we haven't finished the feedback of uh, the rehabilitation center. We went the first day. So I think it would be a good idea to share with our friends. For, uh, especially, they, I'm very sure they don't know even where the rehabilitation center is, what was it about, how it went. I think it's really a wonderful information you should share with our friends on Facebook. And uh, maybe to encourage them to come for the next HMT, because we're already working on the, another HMT January. Maybe you guys said what DSA said. Um, I think it's, uh, it might be not too much time to plan because we're in already in November, so you have like a month and a half to prepare for those of you that are interested in coming January. We will be excited to have you. We are always excited to have you. Uh, I don't want to be the one to say how great we are. <laughs> we are doing our best as a team, but I believe that for those of you that are here can uh, speak to, to testify a bit of how, what HMT is all about. Uh, Mrs. Abiola said something that is very, very true yesterday, that it is not the same you being in this environment and you watching online. Unfortunately, for those of you that can't come, which is understood, it could be work, it could be family, it could be anything. But I'm telling you, you living everything you are doing over there at home and um, paying the price, that is what it's about. I believe most of you that are here have one thing or the other, you know, to keep you at home. But you decided to pay the price. And uh, what happens after you, be, you pay the price? A reward comes. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I believe uh, for our friends that have not been with us um, in Ukraine or in the training, if you decide to pay the price, I don't want to promise, but I believe that the reward is going to be fulfilling. You're not going to regret you leaving your family, your work to come with us. So it's January. Actually, January is uh, the coldest uh, time of the year here in Ukraine. The winter really gets uh, serious. 
So if you're planning, I think uh, it's not that scary. We're going to keep you warm. We'll do our best. <laughs> so yeah, don't be discouraged by the weather. You could still make it. So please, let's keep, let's start planning. Let's save the date. Friends on Facebook, let's save the date and come to History Makers Training January 2018. There is no best place to be in the beginning of the year done with DSA. I'm not bragging. <laughs> I have facts. I believe that uh, the best thing that can happen to you in the beginning of a year is to spend time with DSA. I, I, I remember the beginning of this year, um, what DSA was teaching about um, people trying to go to the prophet or to the churches, you know, how we do it in Africa and other places. The end of the year, Christmas or January, people try to get, go to church to get anointing for the year. Oh, the year of redemption, hallelujah. You know, so we go there to gyrate ourselves and you know, yes, I'm ready for the year. Then you sleep and wake up and the year is ending and you know, no result, nothing. Like what just happened? And it keeps going on. So if you are someone that is tired of having the same year again and again and again, this is the time for you, we are sorry, this is the place for you to be January, especially here in Ukraine with us. We will be happy, very, very happy to have you. Okay, so that is that about the training. So uh, maybe we'll continue. Uh, where were we, with who? who? Who was the person that uh, was supposed to continue with the rehabilitation center uh, feedback? Did we all say, no? Someone, I know, is someone around here? Is it you that we're supposed to continue with the rehabilitation center feedback? I think so, yes. Yes. So please, you can come forward, yeah. You tell us your name, from what country you are, then you tell us the experience at the rehabilitation center, and also tell us what the rehabilitation center is about, so our friends that were not there will know. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Ifoma Fernandez. I am from Nigeria, but I live in UK. I'm coming to, to Ukraine to witness the um, amazing and uh, uplifting teachings of uh, Dr. Sunday Adelaja AIDS. One of the best things that's happened to me in the world. I, I have no words to explain or express what is going on here until you come and witness it yourself. Um, Dr. Adelaja is transforming lives. And one of the examples is when we went to visit the rehabilitation centers in Ukraine here. I, um, I was amazed at what the product of DSA in Ukraine, what they have taken from him and what they are achieving. The, this this um, rehabilitation center is taking care of um, people who are withdrawing from um, drugs and alcohol without any form of treatment, no medications, just the word that has been instilled, the love that has been shown to them, and they are becoming disciples of God. So it's, um, it's amazing that <coughs> that such, such thing can just be happening, you know, from people who are just shown love, just love, truth, and lives are being changed, lives are being transformed. So I, I believe that we can take these teachings to every path of the world. And there is drug issues in, in every, part of the world in UK, in US, in Canada, in Africa. So if we learn the truth, if we learn the truth, because for me, truth brings trust and love. And with just truth, that word, truth and love, we can conquer the world. We can conquer the world. And we've seen the example with the rehabilitation center. And this place takes care of mothers with their children and without any payment nothing just love 
and it's, it's amazing. I, I have no words to describe it, but I know that in my heart that it has inspired me and the whole lot of us that are here. In fact, everyone is amazed at the transformation. And <laughs> the most wonderful thing is that when we got there, we're supposed to be the one to probably help them and do, do so many things for them, but they weren't the one taking care of us. They gave us so much food to eat, and it was amazing. It's amazing love. So please, um, we should all run with what we've learned from here and apply it in all um, areas of our lives where we can show love and lift people from wherever situations or circumstances they found themselves. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, is anyone? Okay, thank you. So, is that all? Everybody? <laughs> Sister, <laughs> Sister Chimwe, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please. And uh, after that, if uh, DSA is not yet here, and Dr. Arams, we would like to hear your own feedback, please, from the Rehabilitation Center, if you don't mind. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Facebook friends. It's Chiwe here again, the controversial lady. She's here. Right, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about um, the center we visited here, um, two days ago. And that's the Rehabilitation Center for Mothers and Babies. I call it Mothers and Babies because they take their children along you know, to support them. And these are people who have um, problems with addiction. Now, it's interesting to know that so many people get into drugs or alcohol or anything for so many different reasons. And these reasons we never explore. We just look at them and say, oh, look, this is the way. Because when people get addicted, they kind of lose focus in life and they become dependent on that drug because that's what keeps them going. And I believe these people that have lost hope in so many different areas, either because they're going through some issues like divorce, relationship breakdown, or maybe family. It could just be anything. Now, when you work with these people, especially in the UK, we give them drugs to detoxify them and all those things. That's what we do. But it's amazing to understand that with the questions we ask them, they said there's nothing like detox, no medication whatsoever. So I, my question is, so how do you people do this? Because I know in hospitals in London, they stay for detox, you know, get locked away, give them medication, they have withdrawal syndromes and things like that. But it's interesting that these people don't go through that. So what's the difference? Are they not human beings? We're all the same. It doesn't matter where you are, your environment. We are the same. And people react differently to things, yes. But when it comes to curing something, maybe an illness, you want to follow a certain procedure. And based on research, this is what we know. You go through detox to get yourself out of certain addiction. But you know, I've come to accept that it's a theory that mm, can be changed because of what I saw here. It starts with the mind. You need to tell yourself that whatever that led me into this, I'm tired of it and I want to leave. Because if you make up your mind that you want to change things, you have to start doing the things you need. And our job now as people who think we are not addicted is to support them, give them the information that they need, to tell them that it's going to be okay, but most of all, show them love. Because love conquers everything. Now, um, when I went to the center, I made some observations, although I didn't ask questions because um, I was listening to everybody and what they were saying. I could see the bonding between those people, I mean the clients and their children. However, it is difficult to take or separate children from their mothers. It is very difficult and that can actually lead to more problems for the children in the future. And again, you can ask yourself, if these children are observing the mother's attitude, the way they behave, maybe the neglect, the you know, lack of emotional, whatever it is, how is it going to affect these children? But you see, the system they used, 
as they are looking after the clients who have this addiction, they are also looking after the children. And they are in the same environment, which means being together, showing them love, keeps them, you know, it, it will help the children's psychology to understand that their parents or their mothers might have behaved in certain ways, which it, it, I'm, I'm not in the best place to judge anybody, but to make them understand that this is what has gone wrong and they can, you know, be better. So giving them that love, the lady we spoke to who answered our questions, what she said was that she couldn't believe because she felt she was a tramp. You know, she was, she, she was looking like a man or a woman. You cannot really differentiate. But whatever, good morning, sir. But whatever happens, the love that she was showed was what made her, made her better. No medication whatsoever. So, you know, I kept asking myself, how did this happen? But you know, Everything is possible because I've come to understand that when you make up your mind to do something and you have somebody holding your hands, telling you it's going to be all right, motivating you, when you want to withdraw and the person says, no, no, we can do it, we can do it, You've been, you know, encouraging people and giving them love consistently. You don't need to give up. We get frustrated and we give up. But we need to learn that patience. We need to hold on because when you see the reward of what you have done, then you know that actually you are fulfilling your destiny. And that's one of the things for me, I think I will take away from here. The system in London might not be the same as here, but it's something that is worth emulating. And I'm very happy to see that there are things that can be done outside of medication in any situation, not just addiction, even in your personal health, you know, physical health or anything. So we need to approach life in a subtle way, understanding that Everything is possible if we put our mind to it. So in other words, love is all that you need. Just a little hug and smile and people will get over things. It can happen. So I really want to thank God that I have the opportunity to visit them and um, observe what is going on. So guys, give love, give a hug and make people's life better. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Can you believe it? Just four o'clock this morning, I got the slides. So I'm, I just finished working on it. <laughs> That's why I'm late, so sorry. The slide that we are going to use for you. Did you get to sleep at all? Well, you know, I, I did my best. <laughs> <laughs> But they just send me, you, know, you see, when you, <clears throat> when, that's why everybody must be competent. Everybody must be the best because, uh, you know, when everybody is doing something the last minute, somebody has to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> the box stop at your gate. <laughs> Okay, but thank God, we, I, I'm sure you are ready. Did, uh, did you get the slide now? Yes. Have you been able to upload it? Yes. Okay, let's go. Now on Facebook, you are already on Facebook, right? But you didn't put off the live, or it was visible enough, it was clear when she was talking. Yeah. We need to put this off, uh, on as well. Yes. Okay, <laughs> this is what kept us up, <laughs> kept us late. <laughs> are you sure you can see from there? I think you are too close. Should we move them? Uh, but Ephraim, can you move that way a little bit? Just be careful with the light. <laughs> I'm not sure you should move the light, you should move the person. Okay. <laughs> now you messed it up.
No, no, the opposite. The opposite? He's <laughs> good. He's funny, though. Okay, no I think I'll just do it myself. The most important thing now. Is that you will be careful of it. Yeah. <laughs> but the good thing is, I was listening to Dr. Arams this the whole night anyway. So <laughs> anyway, listening to his message again. Oh, I think we still need to make the head. Just the not the not the leg, not the head, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Is it strong enough? It's still, it's still sort of leaning. I'm not sure why it's doing that. This or that one, right? So, want to greet all the people that are watching us on Facebook. Want to welcome you and want to encourage you to go and share. Oi. We want to greet everybody that is watching us on Facebook and encourage you to go and share the link. Go and share the link to this message. And uh, let's, let's go and share the link and invite our friends and tag our relatives and people we care about. So we are ready for, the, for yet another day of HMT. Uh, only one topic, this HMT, which is how to become mystery makers. <clears throat> and the, the ideal thing is become a personality or a person after God's heart, the way God, the ideal picture of God for, for our lives. So here we go, Pastor Ernest. Let heroes arise. Let personalities arise. Dr. Sonde and Elijah. So that's the title of the book, I think. Yeah. The new book. That's the title we pick for it. Let heroes arise. Next. Who is a personality? Someone who now lives for something of a higher cause. Now we understand that already, yeah? Yes. Yeah. A personality is someone who is living for something of a higher cause, yes? Someone that wants to make a difference in the world. Okay. Someone who has formed in himself qualities that now make him to be looked upon as a deliverer. Okay, stop. I think uh, point one, which is, can you say that again? Someone who now lives for something of a higher cause. Even if we are, if, I think we already got that. Even if we are all not living quite like that yet, yeah. but I think at least we have an understanding yes. that that is what we are moving towards. Yeah. Is that, am I right in that? Yes. 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 Okay, that's so, one. Number two. Someone that wants to make a difference in the world. Is it, am I also correct about that? Yes. Will I be correct if I say we are there already? Mm -hmm. We now want to make that difference. Mm -hmm. Not just in dreams, because everybody wants to make a difference, but in the dream world. Mm -hmm. But I think our own has gone a little bit beyond that, right? Mm -hmm. That we really want to make it happen. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, number three. Someone who has formed in himself qualities that now make him to be looked upon as a deliverer. Now, this one is a bigger challenge. Because for you to be able to say you have formed in yourself those qualities, I don't know. You need to listen to all those messages on YouTube. You know, you need to really take time. That this that takes that takes a lot of time to be able to form those particular qualities that will make you unmistakably a deliverer in any, everybody's eye. So that we still need to keep on working on it. Because for example, it means you will never be intimidated. And as far as I'm concerned right now, with the, especially with the African Christians, we are too intimidated. Oh, don't mention name. Oh, what about somebody here? Oh, what if, those, those qualities, they can't make you a deliverer. So you might know the right information in your head, but if you are too intimidated, you are too afraid, you are too, you know, doubtful, or you, you are not sure, you are not confident, a lot of qualities still need to be developed for everybody to be unmistakably a deliverer. Someone who has paid the price to form in himself the higher qualities of man. So that is, that is also a process that would demand a, a much uh, dedicated work on oneself. We need to work on ourselves and really spend time to do it. Someone who has overcome the selfish tendencies that hold back from higher purposes. God is in search of them. So somebody who has overcome the selfish tendencies that hold back. You know, that, you know, sometimes these selfish tendencies we are talking about does not just connect to us. It's not only connected to ourselves, but to the whole structure and the world around us. Everything around us is making us to be selfish. Maybe sometimes even we ourselves want to live better. We want to become better. But, you know, children, like we talk about, it's like family, relatives, job, Uncle Sam, everything keeps us in that state of just being forced to live a selfish lifestyle. So for you, for us to really now overturn that, that takes a lot of character development. And that's why we need those two these uh, other two points. So we still need to, you cannot delegate it. You cannot delegate the price to form in yourself these higher qualities of a personality. You know, you need to form it in yourself. And that's why I normally talk about solitude. For me, what God has used to help me is, each time I go to solitude, I will just, like for seven days, I will just be listening so, you know, I will be reading, listening, studying. You know, when you are not eating uh, and you are just by yourself, you are not seeing anybody and you are studying. I mean, for you to be paying that kind of price, you really want to get results. You really want to try. So if your desire, that, that is the best way I've seen to cultivate the best qualities, to form in yourself those qualities that will make you to be able to go, you know, almost every day when I come on Facebook, people always give comments about your boldness, your boldness, your boldness. For me, I've not even noticed the boldness they are talking about. I don't even know what they're talking about. But I remember that there was a time that I formed, that I had to form that. Right now, I don't even notice it. I'm just living my life. I'm just being myself. But because I had formed it. But there was a time that it was my biggest challenge. Ah, in fact, my own boldness was to even come to the stage and say, "Praise the Lord!" I I couldn't even do that. <laughs> or to even hold the microphone, I couldn't do that too. So you know, that was there was a time that it was my biggest dilemma, and at, at another time. I couldn't even stand up to go and take my food in the restaurant, you know, or eat in the presence of others. So, you know, there was a time that it was my biggest problem. But now, today, I see people who don't even have complexes, 
they are, they are not bo they are noble, they are just normal. But for you to be a deliverer, ooh, you must go beyond, 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 beyond normal. So much that you must be ready to go against the whole world. So that is now an extra effort. It takes an extra effort. And that's, you know, you need to take the time, pay the price to actually develop in yourself that stalwart mm -hmm. character that make it now easier for you. Man, I'm just working in it now. But there was a time I needed to develop it. So I have a, because that's when we are talking about history maker, uh, uh, a personality, I think boldness is one of the most, most essential. Especially if you want to become an history maker, a world changer, boldness is probably 80%. That one quality, without it, I don't know what will you will do. You will never be able to. Because every day you need to confront people, uh, circumstances, situations, nations, denominations, religion. So boldness is like 80% of the character trait you need to develop. So that might take you, uh, in my case, uh, I, another thing I did was apart from, you know, I was, I was also looking for people that I could see that have that quality, studying them. Well, anyway, I have a whole series. Um, it's, it's called Confidence. You know, so just go, everything is there. But if you follow those principles, it will really help you to develop that. But that is important. So you need to pay the price to develop that. And then form in yourself qualities that make him to be looked upon as a deliverer. OK, for example, what are, the, what are the top qualities that would make you to be looked upon as a deliverer? That quality has to be formed. So every word I'm saying, every word actually is important. When I'm talking formed, now that, that is a personal thing as well. It's not something you get by listening to the message. It's not something you get by you know, attending the conference. You have to, f and this, what we are doing will help you because of this re regime, the rigor, the, but then it will help you to go through that kind of thing on your own. So you are just being introduced to that lifestyle, but then you have to go and form it. Pay the price to form. So what, are those, what is the main quality that will really you know, enable you to become a deliverer? The main one is what we already spoke about, the ability to notice, to see, and then respond and act. Not to see and comment to, oh, every Nigerian is a commentator. <laughs> <laughs> but to actually see a problem and want to do something about it. Then the next quality that will really help you to become a deliverer is the ability to build, no, the ability to go to the process of, the ability to do the process, to build a structure, the ability to build a structure, go through the process, and form a system. Now, that almost is impossible with Africans. We, we are not just exposed to process, processes. We are not exposed to building structures and building systems. I'm not talking about people like Dr. Arabs, <laughs> but most of us, we are not. I was not. I had to learn it on my own. So, but for, for example, what I mean by that is that now you have decided to become a deliverer and a personality. Now you even know your calling and you know the sphere of life that you want to. Okay, for example, somebody talks about children. I want to deliver children. Or I want to get uh, homeless children or orphan, orphans. But a normal Nigerian person will have that desire. And you know what he will go and do? He will go and be praying. Either is praying for air power or something. What do you call it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> destiny, yeah. <laughs> Either he's praying for destiny air power or he's uh, just praying that God will just make it work. Yeah, do something. 
<laughs> make it <work. laughs> But he's not educated in training himself in management, in structure, in systems, in processes. In, you know, so that I've already done HMT on that, so I'm not going to go. If those are already on the YouTube, if you go to yeah, it's already. If you go to the section on HMT on YouTube, you will look into them. You will see how to about systems, structures, how to get those. So I'm not going to be repeating those ones. So, uh, but that is another thing that you will really need to pay the price to form those qualities in you. Yes, eventually, maybe you will need to have managers, assistants that will help you. But you still need to know what you want. You need to know the rudiments, the basic rudiments of system building, structures, processes. Then you, you, think you make things, things work around you. So those are the things I will. So when it comes to uh, overcoming, no, sorry, when it comes to paying the price to form in yourself, higher qualities of a man. Here I spoke about, uh, I spoke about boldness, right? That you need boldness. Here, when it comes to forming the qualities that make you to be looked upon as a deliverer, I spoke about three things here. Who remembers? System. That's the last one I just spoke about, yes. That is stru structure, structure, processes, system. system. Uh -huh. Ability to see, see. notice, uh -huh. and, and, and action, yeah. action, yeah. Just telling you to, for you to notice what you need to work on. And the reason I'm underlining these things, those four things, you know, boldness and all these other ones, is that you will know that these are things you need to work on individually on your own. Maybe your solitude time, or you know, those are the qualities you more really develop. Boldness, the ability to see and respond. That is actually, you can put all that in one word, responsibility. But see and respond. And but that building structure, you know, processes and system, that really needs you to have some little bit of expertise. Deve you know, but still, you have to develop it in yourself. You have to. And that includes building a system of people around you, teams, building people into structures, and building people into systems, and then managing the processes of what they are doing. Then you will know that any, if you have that, 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 that last part of it, those are, that is what assures you and makes you to be always be sure that anything, any idea you have in your mind, you accomplish it. Is all thanks to structure, processes, and systems. They enable you to know that if I say I'm doing this, it will be done. You know, people who know me, they will tell you that uh, Pastor Sunday, even before he says it, if he says it, if he has said it, it means he has already done it before he won't, before he won't announce it. Because you know, that is you only think you get you should get to a place where you only think in structures and systems so that even when you are talking it before you everybody anybody who hears that you are talking about it your mind has already built a system you already see the whole process so that's important and i see that a lot of people have that weakness i had it i had to spend a lot of years to develop that and then you don't see one book do you to read you have to a lot of in on train i mean on uh, in training kind of growth and then a lot of books. It's very difficult to find one particular book that will teach you other things. But uh, I, I have some books in Russian. I, I think I have to translate them to English in building structures. So, for example, there is a structure. There is a book I have in building a system to attract money for your projects. That is a different structure uh, and a system. Then there is another book I have on building systems in general, just skills of building structures, 
processes, systems for anything you want to do. Mm -hmm. So that's another book, but they are all in Russian. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. Psalms 82, verses 1 to 7. God presides in the great assembly. He renders judgment among the gods. How long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. The gods know nothing. They understand nothing. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I say, you are gods. You are all sons of the Most High. But you will die like mere mortals. You will fall like every other ruler. OK, we need, we need some understanding here. So this is a scripture here from Psalm 82. It says, God presides or shows up in the meeting in a great assembly. So what was happening in this great assembly? And who are the people there? It's a meeting of songs. So it was a prophetic vision that God showed to David and that God was standing up among his sons, his children. So, and he was pronouncing judgment among sons. So in many translations, some translations say sons, some say gods, but basically it's talking about sons, human beings. And um, so God was, what is the judgment he was pronouncing? What is the statement he was making? So God was saying to his sons, how long will you defend the unjust? How long will you defend the unjust? I mean, that doesn't make sense. How do we defend the unjust? Defend the unjust? I mean, unjust doesn't need defense. Unjust needs to be judged and punished and, and uh, rebuked. But whenever we are not standing on the side of the oppressed, Whenever we are not standing for justice, you are standing on the side of the oppressor. That's what he's trying to say. So if you are not defending the defenseless, if you are not defending the weak and the vulnerable, you are on the side of the unjust, of the oppressor. So that's what God is trying to tell to us, his children, and say, how long will you be on the side of the oppressor? How long will you defend the unjust? You know, it's like an irony. Ironic statement. How long will you defend the unjust? Because you are not defending the oppressed. So it means you are defending the unjust. And how long will you show partiality to the wicked? I mean, you about yeah, how long will you show partiality to the wicked? So you are not defending the people the wicked is oppressing. So it means you are showing partiality to the wicked. You are standing on the side of the wicked. Because you are not defending the weak against the wicked. You are not taking the side of the weak. So you are on the side of the unjust. You are on the side of the wicked. So it's an irony of God talking to his you are and these people, we Christians and sons will say, ah, when? Because you are not defending the people that qualify to be defended. It's just like Jesus saying, I was naked and you didn't clothe me. I was hungry, you didn't feed me. You say, when? How? I didn't see. Where? We didn't ever saw you. Well, you didn't do it to the people who needed it. It means you had, you know. So that's basically what he's saying. So how long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? Now, what, what does that mean? Defend, you didn't defend the weak, you say. When you did not defend the weak, you are showing partiality to the wicked. You are showing partiality to the unjust. You are on the side of the unjust because you didn't defend the weak, you see. And the fatherless, you didn't defend the fatherless, you see, defend the fatherless. You didn't defend the fatherless, it means you stand on the side of the wicked who is oppressing the fatherless. You stand on the side of the unjust who is, you know, taking advantage of the fatherless. You did not uphold, you, you are supposed to be upholding the cause of the poor. You did not oppose the cause of the poor. You see, it's still in the same line of justice, equity, truth and righteousness, you see. You know, God is all about this. And it's going to amaze you how many messages you will listen to in your life. And the preachers don't even notice these things. They don't even see these things in the Bible. The whole Bible is not just about this. But it's the kingdom. 
This is nature of God. This is love. This is loving kindness. This is the whole essence of God and faith in God. To defend the weak, <clears throat> to defend the fatherless, to uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. So if you ever want to become a millionaire only for this purpose, to advance the purpose of the kingdom. If you ever want to be significant in life, it must only be for this purpose. If you ever want to get education, it is only for this purpose. If you ever want to do anything in life, it should be related to carrying the nature of the kingdom and of God to the world. So defend the weak, the fatherless, that is justice, equity, righteousness, and truth. Uphold the cause of the poor, the oppressed, rescue the weak and the needy, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. So you see, because he was not doing that, that's why he said you had stood on the side of the wicked here and the unjust. You are defending the just because you are not standing on the side of the weak. So you are supposed to deliver them from the hand of the wicked. You are supposed to be gods, the sons or gods. You are supposed to be like gods over these situations, over all these situations, but you know nothing. You understand nothing. You walk about in darkness. These are all similar stuff. You know nothing, you understand nothing. So who are the people and why, who are the people who know nothing, who understand nothing and walk about in darkness? What is God calling darkness? What is God referring to as understanding nothing? What is he referring to as knowing nothing? When you don't live a life of justice, you know nothing. When you don't live the life of truth, you know nothing. When you don't live the life of equity, you know nothing. You understand nothing. When you don't live the life of righteousness, or you don't promote righteousness, you don't promote righteousness, you don't promote equity, you don't promote truth, you don't promote uh, you know, uh, justice, you know nothing. You, still, you have not lived, you've still not understood anything in life. That's why life cannot be about egocentrism. Life cannot be about selfishness. Life cannot be just about you. There is no way you will live for yourself and promote justice. There is no way you will live egocentric life and live, uh, you know, promote equity. There is no way you will live egocentric life and you are, then you are only promoting justice for yourself. <laughs> that's no more justice, that's egocentrism. <laughs> so you, there is no way you will even live at all. And you say you live if you are not living for these things. You are not promoting justice for the weak, for the fatherless, for the poor, for the oppressed, for the weak, for the needy. You are not delivering them from the hand of the wicked. You are not, you know, standing, taking a stand for them. Then you know nothing. You've not even started life. You've not started living. You don't understand life. I mean, you've wasted life. You've just been going to work. You've just been living for Uncle Sam. You are dead. You are deaf. You are blind. You are nothing. And, but can you imagine how painful it is then to say, there are people who call themselves pastors, churches. They are supposed to promote the cause of God. And they don't have an idea of this. And you know the, what Christians in my country will do? They will say, oh, they are civil activists. They are civil societies. Uh, they are advocates. Yeah. Human rights advocates. That was the word I was looking for. Yes. Human rights advocates. They are, for the, they are not for us, church. We, we, they are not. we are about praise and worship. <laughs> night, <Okay>. night VGs. <laughs> what you say? That's why Jesus said that <clears throat> that that priest that passed by justice in the Samaritan story, he passed by justice, passed by equity, passed by truth, passed by righteousness. Even though she's he's going to church to sing and to do conduct service, and the Levi too. They are not going to heaven. Life is not about religiosity. You cannot love God without loving people. And you cannot love people without bringing justice to them. Without seeking for their justice. Without defending the poor. Without 
But in my own country now, Christianity is so paradoxical that, I mean, <laughs> things that are not co combinable, things that are not fathomable, is what people now present as Christianity. I mean, it's... So, <clears throat> but God is saying, in that case, you who are supposed to be gods over situations like this, you know nothing. You understand nothing. You walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth, because of your nothing, because of your lack of understanding, because of you knowing nothing, because of you walking in darkness, what is darkness? You don't see. You don't see what you're supposed to do. You are not functioning. You are walking in ignorance. You don't see. Because of all that, because of your ignorance, lack of understanding, see what the consequence is? The consequence is that the whole foundation of the earth is shaking. Whenever you see crisis, the stability, or instability, or what? Instability. Instability. Crisis. Economic ruins. Damages, catastrophes, war, hunger, poverty, corruption. Whenever anything is out of order, that is what he's talking about. Foundations of the earth are shaking. Economic foundation is shaking. Political foundation is shaking. Social foundation is shaking. What, who is to blame for it? Satan? No. God said, my sons, who are supposed to be God over situations. But when they walk in darkness, the whole, work, the whole world works in darkness. When they don't know, they don't understand the foundations of the earth that I've put in place, the foundation of the creation, the foundation of life, the foundation of community, relationship, everything begins to shake. Because nobody is taking over the relationship sphere. Nobody is taking over the relationship. Nobody is taking over the economy. People are not going there to take responsibility, to promote justice, equity, truth. Everywhere where sons and personalities refuse to appear, the foundations begin to shake. So that's why this week topic about personalities is so important. It's a sin to have 1,000 people in your church and they are just coming every Sunday. Your assignment is to convert them to personalities who will take care of these things so that the foundations of the way will not shake. So, for example, when the people who are supposed to be managing the economy, you know, social life everywhere, politics, when they are just sitting down in churches and they are not taking responsibility for what they are supposed to be doing, the whole country is in chaos. Everything is in a mess. Then my people will come and say, let us pray so that God will come and fix it. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's like saying, I said, hey friend, bring me that bottle of water. But instead of you to, don't take it yet. Instead of you to take it, you move close to it. Move close to it. Don't take it. Just move close to it. Take, drop your stuff and raise your hands. God, give pastor water. Pray. <laughs> you know, he doesn't even understand. <laughs> he doesn't even get it. <laughs> that is, that's Nigeria Christian. Yeah, now you got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. You have to ask God to give me that water. <laughs> Huh? That's asking for magic to happen. That's what my people are doing, my guy. That is what my people are doing. They are praying. To, they are just by the word, and they are praying to God that He should come and give it to me. <laughs> that's why. That's what my people are doing. And then, because of that, the whole foundation of the earth is shaking because nobody is giving that water. We are asking that God should send somebody to go and fix the problem of the orphans. And we are just there. We are praying to God that God should come and fix. That, you know, that, that's why the foundation is shaking. We are praying to God that God should do something about the economy. But we are just there. Well, and we are asking God to do it. 
That's why the foundation of the economy is shaking. We are praying God to God that God should come and do something about our politics. But, and uh, that's why we are praying. I mean, we are praying about it, but that's why the political life is in distress. Because we are just there, but then praying. You see that bottle of water? You see that bottle of water? <laughs> and then our hands lifted up to heaven. That bottle of water right here. And then uh, God give me to drink. <laughs> there's, there's a video on YouTube. Yeah. That, um, somebody sent it to me, so I'm not sure if it's on YouTube, but it's incredible. There's a fire in the building. There's a fire in the building. Literally, fire. In Europe, people, first they fire drill, you all rush outside, you get a fire brigade, they come in, they deal with the fire. These people were in the building whilst smoke, thick smoke, was coming and they were praying. <laughs> it's in Nigeria. They were outside, yes, yes. Nigeria, I think, mountain of fire or something. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Fire! <laughs> They have faith. <laughs> they are very spiritual. They are very spiritual. I have it. I showed it in my program. Okay. So whenever there is so much darkness like that, darkness means ignorance. So whenever there is so much ignorance like that, people don't understand how life runs. And the way I, when I look around me, I think people don't just understand how the world is supposed to function. Short people just don't have other, other understanding. Even people who are religious, who are Christians, they don't have understanding of even the concept of Christianity or the Bible or how the life is supposed to be, to be run. I mean, that's why you have people in America who say, I am a faith preacher because God called me to preach faith. Or somebody will come and say, I am a healing preacher or something, or a healing evangelist. Or somebody will say, I'm just a this and this. People ju just don't get it. They don't get the total complex uh, understanding, totality. Everybody has some little fragment of God, of Bible. Everybody just run with their own. But people don't have a holistic thing. So that's why we are talking about this, so that you have a whole holistic picture of God, his view of life, his understanding of why things are all out of order, why things are shaking and what is expected of man, what religion is supposed to be about, God's position about that, God's position view on us, our position in it. So with, with what you have, we've been teaching this week, you are supposed to get a better, a more holistic understanding of God, his point of view, how he's seeing you, how he's seeing the world. So when things are shaking in the world, you see now how, that is how God is seeing it. He's, you are praying to him, but you know better now. He's saying, you, you guys are dumb. <laughs> He's saying, hey, man, you know what is happening? The God, but you are the God. You are the ones to be in church. But you, are, you know nothing. You don't understand. You walk in darkness. As a result, then all the foundations of the earth is shaking. And I say to you, but you are the ones in charge. You are the gods. God, not like God Almighty. And not like God in, not like God as in power, quality, but in functioning. We are supposed to rule over, you know, when you, you know, like you are the manager, you are the one in charge. So not like we are God that like we will never be sick or we we'll never, we we'll can do everything. But we are in charge. When you are in charge, you are the God over that situation. So that means we are supposed to be ruling the earth. You are supposed to be managing all these things. You are the God over it. You are supposed to be the God over injustice. You are supposed to be God over lack of judgment. You are supposed to be God over you know, bringing justice to the weak. And you are supposed to rule over that, manage it, put it in order. So I say you are gods, but you are sons, you see. I said they are sons, right? You are, but you are the sons of the Most High. You represent me. Bring my order. <clears throat> You are supposed to rule like God on the earth. You are my sons, you see, sons of the Most High. You are supposed to rule over, like God rules over things, so you rule over all this disorderliness. But, but because you don't understand, and because you know nothing, because you walk in darkness, you will die like mere mortals. But before, why do you die like mere mortals? Because you have lived 
like mere mortals. So because you are living like mere mortals, you will also die like mere mortals. So instead of us to live like mere mortals, like we are just like everybody else. And when I look around, I don't know if you know Christians, if, if you notice that Christians are kind of different from other people, I don't, I don't. I don't see Christians being different from other people. Christians that I know, almost everywhere, they are just like normal people. They are just like normal people. They are nothing different. So they are living like mere mortals. And that's why they will die and fall like ordinary mortals as well. So, but really, we are not supposed to, all of us, we are not supposed to be, be uh, normal mortals, mere mortals. We are all supposed to be extraordinary everywhere we are. The understanding what other human beings don't understand, function the way other human beings can function, manage the earth, administrating justice, security, peace, I mean, uh, truth, righteousness to the earth. That's what other human beings are not supposed to understand and be able to administer. So that's why we cannot live a normal life if you understand. But why do we live like a normal human being, mere mortals? Because we lack understanding of who we are and of our mandate. But when you have that understanding, you cannot live a mere uh, mortal life anymore. So this is a loaded scripture here. Loaded. Do you now have a better understanding of it? Yes. Challenging. Read this scripture. I've never got this. I only argue that we are gods. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you God is the responsibility. Anyway, some people want to say something. Yeah, please let them say. That's a cool jacket you have got. Thank you. That's a cool one. And those are the kind of things I like. I'm going to wear something like that tomorrow <laughs> to commemorate you. <laughs> Hello, Facebook family. Um, so far, what we've done as per discovering our personalities and this scripture, oh my goodness, it just, it just makes me see myself totally, totally different. You realize that, Daddy God, I mean, we are extraordinary people, and we have been given an extraordinary assignment. We are ambassadors. When you think of, um, what do you call it? You think of um, ambassadors that are sent to different uh, countries to represent you know, another. That is who we are. We have, we have, um, we have an extraordinary God, an extraordinary assignment, an extraordinary wiring and this you know what we've learned so far puts everything into perspective as a use of time that now when we go back we have no choice we, it will be a crime to go home and do things the same the same way with this knowledge you realize that oh my goodness we are like how do you call these people um, uh, missionaries on assignment, I don't know if there was a term like that, missionaries on assignment, and t to think that the world it is what it is because of my irresponsibility or lack of understanding of who I am, that is, that is phenomenal. I don't know about you, that is indeed phenomenal. And so what I want to say is I now see myself in a much greater dimension. I see myself from God's perspective, from a heavenly perspective, as per the way I used to see myself. You know, yesterday I was talking about my life story, my thinking, and all the rest. And I feel like, I feel like Daddy God's heart is really, really breaking. Because I'm a parent. I'm a parent of two adult children, like I said to you, um, uh, 25 and 22. And it would absolutely break my heart, you know, having raised these children with the best, you know, and then to see them have no sense of identity and just walking about like paupers, as if they, you know, as if they have no parent, just, it, that would really break my heart. And I'm thinking about him. You know, Daddy God is a, is a, is a, he's a generous God. So when he blesses us with gifts, he really gives us the best. You know, he doesn't give us crap. 
he, he gives, even, even us as you know, earthly uh, parents, we know how to give good gifts to our children. So I'm thinking about God, if he has endowed us with uh, blessings, talents, they must be precious, you know. He has wired us for our assignments. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, why have I wasted all these years to let people label me and tell me, let the world tell me who I am, let other people define Can me. Can you imagine that these things were in the Bible? They're in the Bible, but you're reading through, what do you call and it? What do you wonder? What are people preaching about? I mean, uh, 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 some of you are going to church all these years. <laughs> oh my goodness, I, I am just totally blown away. It makes me, you know, every time I come here, for, especially with HMT, it makes me see Daddy God in a greater dimension. And I feel more and more empowered. It is just a beautiful... I mean, there is no excuse for any Christian no. to be to be mere mortal, to be mundane, to be... No, 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 no. It's just, it's, it's, I'm, 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 I don't know. I'm to just... understand God, God's concept, God's perspective, God's view and expectation of life, how he sees things, how he sees us, what we are supposed to be doing. Yes. If you, you don't need to be extra talented or extra, just, just have the... understanding, just have light, and then walk in that light. You are already going to be extra fruits. Extra human being. It's just, it's just amazing. So just understanding this, this identity that we've been given, and then all you need to do is focus. Do your training. Just focus. Be the best in that in yes, that area. That's it. Be the best, and yeah. then go and administrate. So yeah. I'm a manager. Yeah. He's entrusted me. So I'm a manager of a, a particular of the earth. area. Yeah. That is phenomenal. I'm totally blown away. Somebody wanted to. Somebody wanted to say something to you. Yeah. No, no, no she, you are here, now. She's here. Oh, sorry, please. I don't want to talk too much. Um, now, I, now I understand. My name is Grace Cherry. Now I understand when people say, since they did their first HMT, they've always come back. <laughs> I think I'm joining that group. Because, uh, as Pastor Ines said, that scripture, we we'll only use it to tell you, you are God's, yeah. without understanding. Um, DSA, I want to thank God for your life. Um, because there's a lack of leadership in the body of, in, all over the world, but in the body of Christ. Can you imagine you have all these gifts, all this capacity, mm -hmm. and you don't even know what you have? Mm -hmm. It's like the story of the guy that saved all his life to join a ship to another country. And while he was there, he was living on crumbs. A uh, few days to the end of the journey, he went up, he said, I'm, I don't have any other thing to eat. And they said, but your ticket covered everything, the provision, <laughs> all that you needed to get to your destination. Mm. Can you imagine? Thank God I'm not hearing this message at 120 years. I said I would decline. You know, my tears would have been cubes. Ice cubes, please, DSA, please, don't ever stop what you're doing. Don't ever stop what you're doing. Because this has been our heart cry. Mm -hmm. We knew something was missing. Mm -hmm. yes. we, had, we knew something was missing, yes. but we didn't know what. Yeah. We didn't know how. Mm -hmm. We were searching. Mm -hmm. Some of us have gone to conferences all over the world. Yeah. Some of us have allowed pastors to yeah. use our lives to yes. progress their ministry, mm -hmm. but we still didn't get it. Mm -hmm. But we thank God we're getting it right now. Yes. Yes. Thank God. Thank you. And yes. I think now I understand, I begin to understand why even what I was saying yesterday about family life mm. is a bit strange to a lot of people because we have reduced, we brought ourselves down to mere life, to mere mortal life. Uh, of course, if that's the way you are seeing your life, are just ordinary. You are just measuring yourself, your own life, yes. like any other human being. Yes. Uh -huh. Then there's, there's no problem. That's why, that's why I now understand. Yes. But if your, my, your mindset, your understanding is in line yes. with who you are, really, that you are not even supposed to be thinking that yes. other human beings can live like on that level. 
if you if you want to if if you if you uh let us carry on if yeah if you if you want to say something we don't want to get distracted we want to maximize financial yeah but let us speak let us speak you you don't refuse a lady what I just wanted to say is I I am just amazed because this scripture there is no way I would have understood that this is what we're required to do. <laughs> I, 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 I was wondering that because we are not taking care of the, the oppressed, mm. the, um, the poor, the, the, poor, the, the, orphans. The, the, the orphans, the widows, the widowers, um, and the, the earth is shaking. And that is why we can now see why Africa is broken. Yeah. Nigeria is shaking. In yeah. fact, it's broken. It's not yeah. even shaking anymore. It's yeah. broken. It's yeah. crushed. But if anybody has yeah. told me that this is what this scripture stood for, I, 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 I would but never if have it believed has always it. been there, though. I, yeah. We don't know. I didn't understand it. I didn't. I'm not even saying it. I couldn't say it. And the pastors, the big pastors in, in Africa, in Nigeria, they are not, they are not it. seeing it. And if they see it and they're not telling us, they, which means they are the witchcraft all over the, the wizards, world. The yeah. wizards all over the world. Thank you very much. Yeah, because if people really get it, the churches will be doing the right thing, yeah. which means the church will be releasing people to go and fix everywhere. Mm -hmm. But when you tie them down in the churches, then the whole world will keep on going. Yeah, I want. And that, then you also end up suffering from that. Everybody will be suffering from that, even you. I think it's a lack of understanding. They do not know, they do not understand, they walk in darkness. The surprising thing is that they still don't want to understand. <laughs> because I know some couple of religious people have sent your messages to, they are still telling me that they are praying for revival yeah. in our country, Nigeria, praying for revival, no, that we don't need is, to do anything. To so pray for revival is an act of ignorance. When you understand the way things are supposed to function, when you understand this, you know that you are the revival. I don't pray for revival. I carry revival. I bring the Bible. Anyway, we'll talk about the Bible next time. <laughs> Please, where is the Babusha? You don't go sleep on me, oh. <laughs> next slide. In, in, this no, in, in this scripture, back please. I see five characters. In this scripture, I see five characters. Because you remember what we read, right? Yes. So there are five characters there. I want to underline. Please go ahead. Character one, God. God is the judge of the universe. The first people with whom He starts His judgment will be. Those to whom he has conferred some form of authority. Those of whom he expects much. Those he anticipated to have become personalities. Now let's go back to that scripture again so that you understand what we're talking about. You see, God precise, so he's a judge. You see him as a judge here. Yeah? Then he renders judgment among who? It's not among unbelievers, so, but among the sons, the people who are supposed to be managers, gods of the earth, you see. Now, go back to that, uh, to where we just read now. Okay, now you understand it better. Can you retake it? Those to whom he has conferred some form of authority, those of whom he expects much, those he anticipated to have become personalities. You know, these are not pastors only. Mm. These are sons. Mm. All of us. Mm. He will judge among us. Mm. He will judge us. 
He's expecting us. So somebody say, okay, why do we have that? God is bad. I say, why? Okay, why should he allow war to be going there? Why does he allow abortion? Why does he allow children to be born sick? Why does he allow... Ah. I, he has me here. He has me here. Leave him out. I'm here. He has you here. When you are not doing your part, I'm not doing my part, nobody is doing anything, then you want to blame him? What, what are you talking about? That bottle is down there. That bottle is down there. And what is he doing? Praying. Praying to God to come fix it. And then you blame God that God didn't come and bring that bottle? Come, go and do it again. <laughs> That's a bottle for him to drink. Drink the water. No, then what do you do? God help me pray. Let me drink the water. Bring the water. Yeah, but that's the bottle. <laughs> that's what we are doing. And then you blame God that He didn't send the water into your throat. <laughs> no, no. We are supposed to fix the earth. We fix the earth. He has us here. That's why he will judge. He has the right to judge. The okay, next point, next uh, page. God is disappointed because of the conflict between his original expectations and the doubting realities. He created men to be kings and judges. No, sorry. God is disappointed because of the conflict between the or his original expectations and the daunting realities that are on ground. What, what's happening in the heart today? Now, but what is his initial? Why is he disappointed? Why does he have the right to be disappointed? Because he created men, all of us, to be kings and judges. And you know what? Unbelievers are taking their position in a lot of ways. Because it never really said, you know, it's, it, all of us have that right to do it. But we who are supposed to be the leaders, his children, we are not doing it, unbelievers are doing it. So we are supposed to be kings and judges. That's why he has the right to be disappointed, because we are not taking our positions as kings and judges. He has the right to be disappointed, because we are supposed to bring righteousness, peace, joy, justice upon the whole earth, which is what we got yesterday, justice, equity, righteousness, and truth. But, but, you see, but, we are busy with everything else, only not fixing the earth. Busy with everything else. Yeah. Only not doing what we're supposed to do, our first priority. That's why when anybody tells you that your priority is to get married, or I shall have my children, you shall have your children, you will born, you will deliver, you will deliver in the name of Jesus. And God is looking for managers of the earth. And you are not even thinking that it's a blessing. God is preventing you from having that children so that you'll be able to focus and manage the earth for him and do and fulfill your purpose. Or maybe God is not making you to have that husband so that you'll be able to function and bring heaven to earth, which is higher than just having children that you that will not even remember you in the next gener four generations. Do you, how many, how, how many, who, who has the most children here? How, who has the most children? Five. Yes. Come. Five children. Yes. I'm going to break your heart, but I think I will not break your heart because you already know too much. I'm going to break your heart, but you are not going to be disappointed because you, you understand already. You think those your children, those your five children, are the ones that are, that will be your reward in life? Nah. No. The people who will be more reward are the ones you are pouring your life into, not those people who came out of your body. But I will even do. I will even say something worse to you. In the next four generations, five generations, those people who come out of you from your blood, the children, children, children of your, of your children, 
they will not even remember that you are their grand. They will not even remember you. If you want to, I want to say, okay, you tell me four generations back, who was your grand, 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 grand? I can't even remember the name. And if you had asked them that time, they would have said, oh, money, or what is it? Something that, oh, money, or, or, or money, or, or, yeah, they would say, oh, money, or 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 no, no, no. There is something. There is a newspaper they have uh, on the internet newspaper. Abayomi or not Abayomi. Abiyamoya. They will say Abiyamoya. <laughs> you know, they will say everything is for cho children. Oh, we live for children. Yoruba people. We live for children. Everything is for children. That if grandparent five, five, five generation ago, they would have said, oh, everything is about our children. They would not even think in their widest dream that. Those same children that have come from their bosom, the blood, their blood will be flowing them. They will not even remember their name, talk less of their personality. You too. None of your children will remember you. None of your grandchildren will remember you. None of them. You are just wasting. You are just, because those things are not eternal. God didn't design the earth for, for just for children to remember. That is not eternal. Those are the only things that we eternal. Even the one, I'm not talking of the one in your village. I'm talking of your own from your boss from himself. I'm not talking about the one who live in the same town like you or from the same country. I'm talking from your blood. They will not even remember your name. Talk less of saying you live for them. Ah, everything is my children. We are working. <laughs> <laughs> They will forget you easy. Name self, they will not remember. So, you know, the reason why they still remember a little because you are here physically. Die tomorrow. Maybe they might not even remember your, your anniversary to go and put to do something there. Finish. So, you know, we are too. Uh, we are too mundane. We don't understand God. But look at what God's art is. Greater things. So why does it say there will be no children, no marriage, nothing over there? Because God is greater than the mundane. What about on the earth? But we need to populate the earth. Yes. But without you, that earth is going to be populated, believe me. <laughs> that is not your that is not your primary something. That is biology. That is going to happen anyway. Because it's instinct. People are going to sleep. People are going to have fun. In fact, even you yourself, all of you that are here, you think that you are having children because you are thinking of raising godly heritage? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Of course. <laughs> Of course, 90% of you, 90% of you, you never thought of that. You know what you are thinking about? <laughs> you had some biological sexual desires, and you saw somebody that you like. Just as just instinct. Then as a result of instinct, we have to be pregnant, you have children. <laughs> then you have to just manage. That's what just happens. That's why people don't have, that's why, you know, you were surprised yesterday that I was talking about get ready for everything, get everything ready. Because the lifestyle tells me that you, you know, everything is just accidental, everything is just consequential. But people who thought about that, they live differently. They already, you will know, everything is set, everything is prepared. But when you need to struggle, you have always been walk, walk. Because people didn't think ahead of serious stuff. So, you know, so when you have children accidentally like that, consequentially, what do you want? Your whole life will be like that, just accident everywhere. <laughs> that's <laughs> so that's why we, we, that we should understand as human beings what are the greater things in life. Children are beautiful. Wife, pa partners, marriage is great, but they're only great after you put them in their right place. And they're secondary stuff in life, really. 
the primary things in life is what the heart of God is really about. Yes. Yes. Huh? Yeah, but most people don't like it when I talk like this. Most people think I'm backstabbing when I talk like this. But I know that when they get to heaven, their eyes do open. But Jesus has already said it. Paul has already said it. Everybody has said it. But no, human beings, oh, they don't want to hear how. I mean, William Wilberforce. William Wilberforce, the man that helped um, slave trade, slave trade yeah. to end. Um, you know, how many years ago that it happened? We still remember what he managed yeah, to achieve. What he has done. But do his descendants. Odd. Or would nobody knows anything? Would they know him from the same perspective? You know, would they? It's just incredible. I mean, such a sovereign. Like thought. all these people now, you know, like I think Newton, other they never married, no children. Even if they married, no children, you never even remember another. But you remember them because they fulfill purpose. Yes. The people who are remembered in time and age, it's not because they have children. No. Even your own children will not remember. Even if you have hundred, they will still not remember you. The only factor that make, that's how life works. The only factor that means people to be remembered is for one, two things. Either you live for people, for others, beyond your own biology, then you are remembered. Or you live for purpose. Only two things make you be, to be remembered in life. Even if you have 200 children, none of them will remember. They will forget you. That's just life. That is just, it's not just, it's, life, it's law, it's the law. Even the ones who they will be remembered, okay, Shakespeare. Why is it that you know Shakespeare's name and your grandfather's name? You can't tell me. <laughs> you tell me. Wow. Eh? Fourth generation again. But Shakespeare, he lived 200, 300 years old, more than your grandfather, farther than him. But where are they? Shakespeare wrote something and left. Uh -huh. He fulfilled purpose. <laughs> Only people who fulfill purpose are remembered for time and eternity. And then people will live for others. All other people who are just living for themselves, you will be forgotten. Either you like oh, you know like oh, you will be forgotten. Oh. The only thing is that people don't want to be told ahead <laughs> because they don't like the truth. <laughs> they, will, they will just don't tell me that. Tell me that everything will be okay. I have children. You don't live for children. When you live like that, you have, I know your future. I don't need to prophesy anything. I just know your future. You will be forgotten and buried and forgotten, rotten, and nobody will even know you are here. But when you live for purpose and destiny, even people who never live in your generation will still be talking about you. <laughs> so I'm sure you understand that. Yes. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. You want to say something? I just wanted to ask you. Yes. Um, I I get everything that you're saying. Yes. So, because personally, I I don't want to have kids, right? Yes. But I'm yeah. But because you're a man of structures and system. Yes. If I can, if I'm allowed to ask you a personal question, so what is your reason? Because you've got three kids, right? Yes. So what is your reason yes. for having three kids? I'm sure you've you thought about it. So I just want to to find out more and then and have more understanding on that. Okay, I've already answered that. That's what I was trying to say yesterday too. That if you know, most people who have children, they don't have children because they know what they're doing. Most people who marry and have children, they don't know what they're doing. They don't, they don't have an idea. But the ideal perception of God is that you will know exactly what you are doing. For example, that's why I was talking about it yesterday, and I'm, I hate to go on to go to back, to back to this, but because you're asking, why did I say that for you to marry, you must treat a lady like that? Because I'm doing, I'm acting as an informed person. So when I uh, approach her and say, "Be my wife," I know exactly what I'm doing and what that means. So that means that I will have to do this, everything I said yesterday, yesterday. So I'm not going to repeat that. So why do I want to have children? I have to plan it. For example, can you imagine I married with my wife, and four years, we were not having children. Because it's not, you know, you don't do it without, that's just the way it's supposed to be. You must know what you want. 
plan it. Now, why did I have children? For four years, we were not having children. Intentionally, we didn't plan to. Because first of all, before every one of my child was born, I knew who they were going to be, who they were going to become in life. OK. The first son, before I even before I went to have sex with my wife to conceive, I went to God. Got a whole download. Who is we are going to? I, you know, I went to spend two weeks with God. God spoke to me about what is His name is, who is going to be, what is destiny going to be. Before I even went to sleep with my wife, then I we, I told my wife that. You know, this month we are conceiving. Because they said she would never conceive because she was having, they said she was having a womb of a 12 year old. And then she was having a lot of uh, cysts that she would never be pregnant. But we, had, uh, we have resolved it. So, and she, you know, that same two weeks later she got pregnant. Then, so I knew who she was going to become. Before my second child was born, I know who she's supposed to become. I first of all went to God, downloaded her destiny, why she's coming for to the earth, who she's going to become. I went, okay, for example, let's say I go to be to do solitude. First day, I say, who is the no, am I we are supposed to have a child? Are we supposed to have a child? Who is she who is it supposed to be? What is the destiny? Then to, the, then the next day, I'll pray about that pregnancy. Let her be pregnant, you know, all that. Pray through all the nine months of the pregnancy. Then pray through the first year of that child's life, second year of that child's life, third year, pray through the school, kindergarten, all the processes. Pray through his adult life, marriage, university education, finances, before I even went to sleep with my wife. Pray through, through his future wife, husband, children, and get an understanding of what they will become. So when I was saying that people who, who have children, you people, when I say you people are just having children and accidental living, anyway, thank God we are not, this is not what we are discussing, but, but you, you people pull my leg. So this is how I understand life should be. But most people I know, they don't even know this exists. No. No. They just, you know, they just see chemistry. They are just living by chemistry. You know, I saw a woman, my body is hot, I go and sleep with her, some children come out, and I begin to run, you know, cash up, cash up, play cash up for the rest of my life. That's how people live, like animals. They are not different. But I am not an animal, I'm informed. So I went and resolved all that before I even became pregnant. That's why four years, you prepare, you get ready, you, you set, set things in order ahead of time. You know, I, I'm surprised that people are not living like this. I'm shocked. But I'm lucky because I got saved at 19. So I started living an informed life earlier. So I know things, I, I got understanding. But most people are living like animals. They are not human beings for me in God's eye. But we're supposed to live like that from God's eyes, God's perspective. Make yourself human according to God's expectations. So I know, so all my children, they know who they are supposed to be. So when you hear my children speak, you go listen to them. Yeah, no, even video. Go listen to them. You will see that they are not just normal human beings. They are already talking like me yes. at 12 or something. And one of them already wrote 12, 13 books at 12. They already know who they are, what they are supposed to become. They behave. They, you know that these are not just somebody sleep together and something, accidental or something. No. Everything is planned out. So, why do I have children? Because I know that if I'm going to have children, they are informed, they are pro according to program, according to order. 
They are populating the earth with godly virtues, godly character. They are going to fulfill this destiny. They already know this. These things you are getting to know today, they already know it like every day, like from the five years old, seven years old. They already understand the scripture. They don't just go to school. They know exactly why they are going to school. They are not just existing. They know exactly what a human being is supposed to exist for in life. They are surprised that, they, like I am surprised, they are surprised that people don't know that the whole world is just living. Because the whole world is just sleep at around, give for bed, get program, get program. You know, they are not informed. So the one I spoke about yesterday about how to treat a wife is part of it, living an informed life and do everything consciously. But with children also, you have to also be. So when God talk about populate the earth and have children, it's not just chaotic like animal. We, we are supposed to be homo sapiens. That is thinking human. Uh -huh. So yeah, and that takes planning. That takes God's, you have to get God's order first. Everything has to be initiated from his perspective. His will as it is in heaven has to be done right. You don't just do it on earth and then say, God bless it, oh, God bless it. Then you are the boss. <laughs> <laughs> then you are the one in charge. You are the, but when you get it first from him, and then you fulfill it, then things are perfect. That's how things are supposed to be found. No, I'm sure, I, I, you know, I don't know if I understand, yeah. if I answer yeah. your question. Yes. Um, I Give her the microphone. Sorry, so no, I just but to... all these are I said I recorded all this. All these are in on YouTube. All these things are recorded. I, I told all these stories. I recorded everything, how everything's supposed to be. But nobody goes to those series. People are going to prayer series and uh, <laughs> the, the Satan of Victory over Satan series. Well, it depends on what people want. But people might just not be aware that they're there. So you people can help people to know that these series are already there. I already told the stories, how they're supposed to be, so that everybody could start their lives in a perfect way, not chaotic the way our parents did it. So I just wanted to say something very quickly. So I got saved when I was maybe like seven or eight. And it's like, I'm, ever since I started watching videos and ever since I was introduced to you, it's like, I wish that I had it Mama no God until I met you because it's like I've been brainwashed by now, religion. Yeah, now that I know the truth, it's gonna be so hard to just take off all these layers of what you know I've been taught since I was little. Like I just wish that I didn't know God until I met you because it's like I was so that led. you could start on a plane. Yeah, because I I felt like I was led the just down machine. the wrong. Yeah. Please, can you give a brother? Sorry. Sorry, I'll be quick. I just want to like say that I relate to that and yesterday that's why I couldn't speak. I was so overwhelmed. I didn't sleep. Mm -hmm. I probably slept the time that we had that break. I probably had a nap for 30 minutes. So I hadn't slept for over 40 hours. I was so mm. overwhelmed. My spirit, I was shaking the whole time I was sitting here. I couldn't speak. So I can relate to what she's saying that I wish I knew this so much earlier. So thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, but still, time, time is wealth. No, what is he Ali, compared to the hell? Time is wealth. You only see Ali, compared to the hell, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, um, I think I've got the answer of life for me. So what you've shared today is basically my life. Um, God has not allowed me to have children for a reason. And I understand now why I'm here. And all these prophets that... And, and the horrible thing about life is that ignorance, the ignorant people will be coming to you. Yeah. Ignorant people. Mm. And be putting pressure on the, yeah. uh, on you, yeah. Yeah. and be you know trying to, and they are the ones at fault. But they will be making you look yeah. 
as if you are the one disadvantaged. But you are the one rather, they are supposed to be learning from you and envying you. Because Prophet's been saying that they've tied my womb in the village. <laughs> so oh, wow. when you were speaking, I understood why God has not allowed children for the past three years. Okay, who could say that? Who would say that? That's rubbish. You are supposed to slap that prophet. <laughs> Beat him up. Send him to jail. I'm sorry, I'm just sorry. <laughs> but if you wanted to say something, you wanted to say something, they took the microphone from her. No, I was just trying to um, say that kind of support or show understanding of what you're saying. I made a decision to have one child. My husband wasn't here when I came to have a baby, then I stayed. Then he came much later. So when he came, nine years after we had, had my daughter, he couldn't come. So when he finally came to join us. Nine wanted, years. Yes, he wanted another child. No, don't, don't worry, tell me, Boss. your husband left you alone with a child for nine years. It wasn't his fault though. I'm not gonna, it, it was And then he came and wanted was, to have another child? Yes, and I said. Bring him to me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Can I give him some dirty slap? <laughs> okay. okay. I, I said no. Okay. I, I refused. I said I'm not gonna have any other uh, I child. Mean, you are in another country, your child. Your, who was working here? Was he sending you all the money? No. Oh. <laughs> he was sending in the beginning, then his business went down. And that's why I say it's not his fault, you know, that he couldn't come. Because his business v went down. Visa eh? issues, and, you know, it took a long time. And he couldn't collect you, why? Uh, eh? Couldn't collect you? I didn't want to go back. That, that the was child? the problem. I, I didn't want to go back to Nigeria. And he was not supplying you your needs? He was in the beginning until his business went down. So he had to then join us. Then he came, he wants you to just be pregnant again, just yeah, go ahead. And, mm -hmm. and I said no. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then the, 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 <laughs> the, the parents, <laughs> when I go home, they, they want me to have more children. Uh -huh. I told them no, because I'm, I'm blonde. I said no. That's what women are meant for, yeah, right? Yeah, I said I'm not going to okay. do that. And because I have a daughter, he's not a boy, a son that will carry his name. So there was this pressure that I should have another child. And I stood my ground, but I, did it, but I did it on selfish reasons. Not because of king, kingdom. the kingdom that I'm learning mm. today. I did it because I'd already started a business that was uh, thriving. And I said, if I have another child, it's going to stop me from, you know, flying high. And because I'm going to start raising this child, go to primary school, da -da 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 -da, you know, it's going to keep me down. But I did not understand this purpose. But I thank God that I have, because now I know that I can uh. run free. I'm, I'm free that I can run and go fulfill the kingdom of God. Thank you. Well, I, I don't think you people should be worried. I don't think you people should be worried about time. Don't worry, I, I promise you, I'm going to finish the whole thing before you go back. Especially if you're going back on Saturday or after Saturday, so don't worry. You know, we're going to f cover the whole club, but the practical aspect is also important. If I'm just talking, 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 and you don't express your feelings, and the practical aspect, we don't hear each other, it's not the same. It's part of the process. It's like when you are eating, eating, and you never drink water. So it's part of the process of assimilation. So, you know, take it easy. Let, let who learn. I, I, I'm, I'm sure I'll be able to finish the material that I prepared for you before you go. So take care of yourself. Speak your mind. Be real. Be genuine. Be, you know, yeah, express yourself and, yeah, it's, let the whole thing get into you, assimilate. Yeah. Um, the message that um, Pastor shared yesterday was really, um, is something that I never heard. Last night. Last night. About how, how a man should prepare, sorry, oh, let me stand. How a man should um, prepare himself. I think that I was kind of guilty. And I, that's why I said yesterday, and, I, and it's like even, even though I said it before he said what he said, it really brought home that I wish I met him 10 years ago, because a lot of the mistakes I made in my marriage now, I would have made. I would have been more prepared. I would know what I need to do as a man 
So I want to thank you for that message. I really think that but message. So, so you are grateful? Very grateful. Because I know that I so, need to so go men, back. So men, men want to know the truth. Yes. Because some people were saying yesterday that it doesn't exist like that. Men cannot be like that. No, I believe that's, I saw that that's the way men should be. Just like you said how you're taking your, you're you taking see? her from Even you, her I, father. I, you? You're taking her from a father, so see? you should be better. It should, it should, it should, it should uh, she should be able to look at you and say, you're the best thing that has ever happened to me. Yeah. So I really want to thank you for, for that message. You support that one. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 only I, that people don't know. That's the only problem. Yeah. So people want to know, like theirs. Yes, say. I mean, I fully support that. My my wife, my, I fully support that. My wife doesn't work, and um, I believe that it's my responsibility to to look after her to make sure that um, she has what, what she needs. Um, the only challenge is how to get her to develop herself, to mm -hmm. develop her yeah. abilities, yeah. etc. And um, that's the area where, you know, I've had this conversation with her. Actually, as soon as I started listening to your messages, I watched one of the HMT videos where a lady talked about her own experiences with her husband and um, how I think her husband was supporting her. And so I had a chat and I said, look, we, this, is some, this is one area that we need to look into, that I, 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 I just want to support you. I want to, I mean, there was a time when we were in a church together and um, in an African church, you know, they, when they see a few traits in you, they want to quickly promote you to certain uh, positions. And um, um, they wanted me to become one of the leaders um, straight away. And my wife said she wasn't comfortable with that. So we had that chat, and then I said, okay, uh, I withdraw then. So I withdrew, and, um, and then she was quite passionate about the children. So she decided to go to the children's department, and so I said, okay, I'll come and join you there and teach under your leadership there. You know? So just because I saw that it was an opportunity for her to develop herself, so I said, I'll take the back seat and let you, um, and, and, and it was beautiful to see her blossom there in that environment. Um, since we left there, we haven't had such opportunities. So, so I'm looking for opportunities to get her to develop because I know, you know, if she blossoms, it's my glory. You know, I will look at her and say yes. You know, if she blossoms, it, she's not. You know, and the more I listen to you, the more determined I am now. I mean, I'm one of those men. You know, I'm one of those men that like to eat fresh food. You've yeah. heard of that. Like yeah. to eat fresh yeah. I don't like stale food. Yeah. I don't like oats. Can, can food. Yeah, I don't like that kind of stuff. <laughs> I don't. But I Sardine. Can, yeah. <laughs> I don't, but I can cook. I can cook and and I can cook for the whole family. And by listening and understanding time, twenty four hours, that's all you're going to get. Nothing more. If you don't use it wisely, you're not getting any extra. So suddenly, I started to wonder that why should we be spending our, you know, our time, our life, our, our revolving around these mundane things when there are such serious issues? When there are such serious issues there, that God, no, this you cannot see, be. You see, you see the heart of God. You see, man, see, beginning to see out God's perspective yeah. to life. So I said, it cannot be like that. So. Now, you remember that you said, uh, I was listening to one of your messages, and you said it took you a long time to persu per persuade, persuade Pastor Bosen not to cook. Because I saw a message was titled, Why My Wife Does Not Cook and I Do Not Drive. Oh, That's it. many people attack me oh, over that. <laughs> when I saw it, when I first saw that message, I, I just thought, hmm, what's, what's this? But I wanted to know. <laughs> but I wanted to know what was there. And after watching that, it makes perfect sense. It wow. makes perfect sense. When I was growing he must up, be I, a pure guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I grew I grew up with a with a, with a single mother. You know, my, my father, my parents split up when I was a baby um, over some silly misunderstanding. Mm. You know, if you hear it, you won't believe it. But they split up. I was just a baby, so my mom just brought me up, and she had to work hard to make ends meet. There was no way she could have been doing all the cooking. and everything. So we had a, a maid who, who was doing all the cooking and everything. So I was just thinking, 
So if that was possible, why is it not possible for me? For me, or when you're married with, with you know, this whole idea that my wife must cook my meals. I never even knew some people used to think like oh, that. Oh yes, there are some people. Can you, be, you know, Poyo, can, ben, can you really believe that? I heard that there are some Africans who say, my wife must be the only person that cook what I eat. Can you believe that? What about if she dies? <laughs> I never even knew there are human beings on earth who would think like that. I, I mean, what, should, what are you thinking about a woman then? I mean, what is that? How could you ever even allow that in your head? She has to stand in the kitchen every day, three times a day, just cooking for you. Ah, ah, Abba. <laughs> you, 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 know the, you know how many hours? You know how many hours that is? What's happening to her hands and fingers? Yeah. And she will have to hug you and rub you? <laughs> Afterwards. <laughs> so, but, but you know, the Bible says that where there's no vision, <laughs> the people perish. <laughs> and I just thought, all this time wasting is because we don't know the vision of God. Ah. We don't know the vision. So anything goes. You come into the world, um, you, you, you get through education, you get married, you have children, and then you follow the path that mm. has already been designed for you, <laughs> blindly just going and doing it, you know, until you wake up to something like this. Mm. And then you're like, God, so there is a vision. God, when he created the earth, he had a vision. He had a vision. And, and it's our job to discover that vision and then walk in it. You know, that's why it's not possible for me to continue living the way I used to live anymore. It's not possible. Not after discovering this. And also something there you said there about the three categories of people that God is going to judge. So those that have already become personalities, but those that he expects to have become personalities based on the knowledge that's been given to them, which means that we'll be held to account for what we are hearing today. We can no longer claim ignorance before God. That, that excuse is no longer going to work. You have heard the truth. Praise God. You see, there are some real sincere people out there. And it's not true that Africa can never be like that. No, it depends on your heart. It's not depending on your past or your nationality. It depends on your heart. And I think, uh, and I think that uh, people just need to know the truth. I think we just need to let people know the truth. And people with the right heart who want to love the truth, they will understand this. They will gravitate to, uh, towards it. Yes, Babush, we could put on the thing now. <laughs> Yeah, you can just read through. Yes. God is disappointed because of the conflicts between his original expectations and the daunting realities. He created men to be kings and judges, to bring righteousness, peace, joy, and justice upon the whole earth. But they are busy with everything else, not only not fixing the earth for God. Next. Do you not know that God entrusted you with that money, all above what buys necessities for your families, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to help the stranger, the widow, the fatherless, and indeed, as far as it will go to relieve the wants of all mankind, how can you, how dare you defraud the Lord by applying it to any other purpose? John Wesley. <laughs> now you are seeing somebody who has two God's heart. Yes. See that. I'm not strange. I'm not strange. You see, yeah. These are people who live normal life, who understood God's perspective. What we are practicing today, 
and call it Christianity? I don't know where we got it from. He knew what we are talking about. And he was a pastor. So he said, do you not know that God entrusted you with that money? But now he's talking about money, but he's with everything. Your body, your body, your time, your skills, your assets, all yourself. Not just to use for yourself and get your family necessities of life. Your body is not just for you to give to your wife or your husband to, to make you pregnant and be giving birth every year. I mean, rubbish. Even though you can use it a little bit for that, for a time. But to just, it's because you don't know. Just, because we don't know God's priority, God's goals, God's agenda, then you just be giving your body to giving birth every year. And then you neglect the thing you are created for. Same with money. Some people do that. Just use all the money for your family, buying the necessities for the family. But God intends that that money will go beyond you and your family. Your body will also serve not just your, your children or your family, but beyond your family. And everything else like that too. So God gives you everything, including money, not just to use for your own necessities of your own family and home, but to use it to feed the hungry as well, to clothe the naked, the stranger, the widow, the father. It's like he's reading from that place we just read. Mm -hmm. The fatherless, and indeed, as far as it will go. Anything God entrusts talent, it must be used for as far as it goes. When you live like that, you, live, you are not forgotten, just like he's not forgotten. But when you live just for this necessity of your family, you are forgotten. And you are not just forgotten by history and by your contemporary. You are forgotten by even your own children that you live for like that. Even those same children you, are, you live for, you give everything to, they themselves will forget you. <laughs> not just history will forget you. Not just life will forget you. Even your children will forget you. That's when you live just for your children and for your family. But when you live for others, for God's agenda, for justice, for equity, for truth, for righteousness. You see, when you become a defender of the hungry, the naked, the stranger, the widow, the fatherless. I mean, this is all over the Bible. And my people today don't even talk about it. They are talking about going to GO, pastors, church, baptized, offering. And indeed, as far as it will go, you have to use all your talent as far as, far as it will go to relieve the wants of all mankind. How can you, how dare you, defraud the Lord? Because that's your body, eh? It's not your own. It's God who just gave you to use for his purpose. Oh. Everything you have is lent to you by God to use for his purpose, first of all. Not to have children, no, and some children, no, no. That is secondary. But first of all, to use for its own purpose. Same as money, same as talents, anything. First of all, you are entrusted to use those things to accomplish its purpose of advancing justice, truth, righteousness, equity. If need be, you could still have entertain children. But don't even rush to trying to entertain children and wife if you will not be able to system at no put the structure, the system, and be able to do it the way God would like to do it. Anything worth doing at all is worth doing well. So don't defraud, how dare you defraud the Lord by applying whatever God has given you to any other purpose, just to, for personal purposes and goals. Yes, sir. Can you give him the microphone? Thank you. Um, well, actually, I'd like you to address a point because millions of people all over the world are actually stuck somewhere because they, they read the Bible or the pastor tell them that that Jesus said that if my kingdom is not a part of this world, so therefore you shouldn't be a part of this world. So their interpretation is that you shouldn't get a 
you're self-educated because when you do that, then you're a part of this world. You shouldn't start a business, you shouldn't be successful in business. In fact, you shouldn't be a personality because if you're in personality, you cannot be, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're actually going against the principles of the Bible because Jesus was very clear that you're not a part of this world. So I would like you to please uh, share some light on that because I think that is one concept that is our idea or teachings that is holding millions of people back. Beautiful, beautiful. Can somebody, uh, uh, please open that scripture, open that scripture, because people don't understand. I think in John chapter 18, people misquote it. People don't know it. My kingdom is not of this world. It's John chapter 18, I think. Can you put it on the screen? Oh, it's not possible to put it on the screen. You can, okay. And I'm going to explain what that means. That is not saying that you shouldn't be part of this world. People are quoting it out of context. But we are going to see what it really meant right now. But uh, I'm looking at why they are looking for that scripture. I'm looking at Bissola, uh, and uh, I'm seeing that your, your mind is full of thoughts and reflections. Beautiful. And, um, but still, you have to rejoice that uh, you are much better off than most people who are here. Because, you know, you are starting early, considerably, comparably. Uh, of course, comparing to my own kids, maybe, but compared to all the people who are here, you have a good chance. Even myself, I started at 19. You are 19 now, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I just turned 24. Okay. I started at 19. Uh, but you are a bit later than me, maybe. But you can still make it. You can still put your life in order according to God's perspective. Uh, you can still fix it. Okay. So John. you see, it's John 18, you see? John 18, 36. So what does it say in that scripture? John 18, 36, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom were, if, if, my, if my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But but now my kingdom is not from here. You see, he's not talking that you shouldn't be part of the world. He's talking about where his kingdom is coming from. Where his authority is coming from. He's talking about the source. So this is exactly what we are talking about. That our life shouldn't be emanating from the earth and they're asking God to bless it. That our life should be rather Starting from heaven, thy will be done. Thy will that is in heaven eh, should be done on earth as it is in heaven. My kingdom is not from this world. My kingdom is from heaven to earth. So he's talking about not that he's it's staying because he's saying, they, because his son, I mean, once this person wanted to defend him, Peter, one of his guys, and took a, a, a sword out and cut off the hair and said, okay, let's fight. He said, no, 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 no. If I wanted to do this, my kingdom, I have a thought, I would have sent, asked my father to send angels to fight for me, a host of angels, because my kingdom is not from this world. My kingdom is from heaven. So I have authority to do even greater things. You don't need to bring a, a sword out. I would have ordered for a whole lot of angels to come and do, make order here. But it's not time yet. A time is coming when I'm going to do that. I'm going to ability to trade the whole earth and I'm coming to rule over. That's the second coming. But it's not, there is time for that. But then when I come, my authority, my jurisdiction is not going to be from you voting for me, or from the earth, my jurisdiction is going to be from heaven. I'm going to be coming with authority from heaven. So what he's saying here is that his jurisdiction, his authority is coming from heaven. And that is exactly how he wants us to live. So now let's talk about our lives. 
Should we be part of this world or not? Exact, no. What, the way our whole life is supposed to be is this. Let thy will be done. Not my will. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So he's still talking about the same thing. Our jurisdiction of everything we do. My plan for life should emanate from heaven to take possession and to dominate over the earth. I should have bring what is obtainable in heaven to the earth. So for example, when we are talking about marriage, we are saying we don't just follow instinct. Those are the things from the earth. But we follow understanding from heaven that man and woman are supposed to accomplish God's purpose on the earth. So that is because of that God's purpose, that's why we marry, to accomplish God's purpose on the earth. Not because of instinct. So we are not coming from the earth, we are coming from heaven. When it comes to children, we don't just want to sleep together and have children as a biological, if you no, know, after, afterwards, and, you know, as consequences, natural accidents of, just, you know, we step together, we have children, accidents everywhere. That, because that is coming from the earth. That's just sex. That after that. But we should be coming from what, what I told you about. Consulting God, how many children, when, how. So that my children is being, as a program from heaven, being accomplished on the earth. Now, that scripture we read in, in uh, Psalm 82, is saying, you are God. You are supposed to be managers. Where is it? Not this one. The first scripture. You are supposed to be managers of the earth. You are supposed to be God's sons. You are supposed to be executing righteousness, uh, justice. What those are things that are coming from heaven. So you need to become a personality in God. So, but personality, how? How do I become a personality? I become a personality by looking at the original personality, the creator, original person, God. I look at our personality. God is the real personality. Who is he? He's love. I become, I develop love in myself to correspond with the original personality. I come, I become love, I bring love here. I love everybody. Now, God is just. I become like him, I bring justice here to the earth. God is compassion. I have, I understand God that he is compassion. I develop compassion in myself, I become compassionate. God is a creator. So I see God that is a creator, I develop myself, I be, bring out inventions. God is the owner of all the riches and wealth in the world. I see that, that God is the gold and silver belongs to him. I become, like I develop wisdom from him I, to myself, I get education and I control wealth and riches. You see, it's all about where it's coming from. So this is what he's talking about. God, and that's what God is ordering us to do. That's what he's saying, the way we should live. You should live like this. God is presiding, he's talking to us. He said, you, you know I am, you are from me, you are my children, you are sons from me, you are God's, you are supposed to be God's, you are like me. You see, I am God, you be God. I am a just God, you bring judgment. I am just, you bring justice. I am a defender of the, I'm on the side of the weak, you defend the weak. I am on the side of the fatherless, you, I am a father, you become father to the fatherless. You know, uphold the cause of the poor. Oppose the cause of the oppressed. Everything God is, you become on the earth, is coming, where is coming from? Rescue the weak, de rescue the needy, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. But when you don't know, as God, you don't know your God, you don't know your master, your source, you don't know where you're coming from. You, you know, when you know nothing, when you understand nothing, when you walk in darkness of who you are, then, for, then the foundations of the whole earth is shaken. And you are supposed to be God, but you, will be, you, uh, you are supposed to be gods of the, I mean, sons of the, of the most high God, but you will die like mere mortals because you don't understand. So what Jesus was talking about is that my kingdom is not of this world. It's not from this world. When time comes, if it were from this world, I would have called my angels to come and defend me. But Christians are religious people. They interpret that to mean that Jesus is trying to say, don't do anything in this world. Don't do <laughs> But they don't get it. They don't get it. They don't get it. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. Because Jesus, God himself is saying, mine is the thousands of uh, cattle on the thousands um, mount, mountains or something. And then he's saying, mine is gold and silver. 
but he wants us to control the fire. He said, the earth is the loss, and the fullness is the around. So we are supposed to manage, but what our people have done, charismatic people in our country, in Nigeria, is that they say, oh, the earth is the Lord. He is gold, is mine. So it's all for us. But those gold and silver, they are supposed to be for justice. So the reason why I want to have gold and silver is to execute, to defend the weak. The fatherless to as uphold the cause of you know the, the, the justice for the poor, the oppressed is to bring justice, to bring truth, to bring you no know, righteousness, and to bring equity. It's all for that purpose. But in my own country, they say no why. So they connect, they, they disconnect themselves from God. Everything emanating from there, they are just seeing silver and gold, and because it's silver and gold, it's coming from heaven, it's earth. They are emanating that greed from earth. They are not emanating the desire to have God or all. They are not connecting with heaven. So once it's connected, disconnected, you only become earthly. And earthly is greed, lust, you know, oppression. So they now become part of oppression, greed. Want to have all the wish and they're oppressing other people, put other people in bondage, you know, taking advantage of people because they don't connect. Their desires are not coming initially from even though they are using the name of god the name of jesus the name of righteousness but they are you i mean the name of our church but they are using all that for here they are not they don't connect with the act of god with the nature of god so they are not using their influence their money their crowd to execute and promote his agenda they are not even reading these things because everything is earthly so that way they are becoming earthly totally but they, they are not coming from heaven. The Bible says, he that comes from above is above all. So if you are coming from above, and that is your uh, motive, your motive is coming from above for money, then you are above the corruption of money. If your motive is coming above for power, then you cannot be corrected about power because you are coming from above. If you are, if you are coming from above and your motive is from above concerning or influence authority, then you will not be under it because you're already above. That is why God is expecting us to live from heaven's perspective, you know, and promote that rather than coming from below, from earthly desires. Then that will corrupt us. I don't know if I'm too complex in my answers. <laughs> but let's go back to that John again. That scripture you just had. So he said, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants will fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But my kingdom is not, my, my, but now my kingdom is not from, you see the word from. So when he's talking about of, he's talking about from. It's all about from. It's all about the, where its jurisdiction, its authority is coming from. It's all about from. Where is my case by skin this from? Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, I think I understand better now where it says, I think in Psalms, where it says, the children of. Um, this world. No, no. Um, the, the people have, that has not got children. That they oh, are better. Yeah, that they have more children. They yes. have more children. Yeah, the barren. The children yes, of the, the barren. barren. Yes, they are, they are more than the, the people with children. Yes. I think I understand that yeah, now. Because from they this live perspective. For yes, yeah. yes. So, but our pastors don't preach like that. They say you must be, you must have your children. You must not be barren. You must because they are coming from the earth. But from God's perspective, people who don't have children, they live for purpose. And because they live for purpose, they have more children than the ones who are just living for physical children. They are limited. The ones who are just depending on their physical. Like, for example, if he had been living just for five children and look, looking at that, he would have been limited. He is ruined. But he is investing his life on a greater number of people. His disciples will carry his something more than his own children. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I think you have to talk again. Yes, I want you to pour your heart out. out. Can you give her the, the microphone? Okay, I'm going to give you mine. Come and take mine. 
By the way, I'm using your tie today. It's okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it looks very nice. <laughs> um, I mean, cover it for? I'm just, oh. oh. No, like, I, I'm just honestly just touched, like, I, I woke up, like, I only slept, like, three hours. I thought I would come here, you know, feeling tired, you know. Um, but it's like, I just feel like I've just been blind. Like, my whole Christian walk has just been, it's, it's been false. And um, it's unfortunate. You know, when I compare myself to your daughters, it's like, they've done so much at such a young age. And I'm here, I just turned 24 last month, and it's like, what have I done? Like, who have I impacted? And yeah, I may, I may be young compared to everyone in this, not everyone, to most people in this room, but it's like, what have I done? You know, there's nothing, it, God forbid if I were to, if, if I were to have been called home, what would I have said to God that I've done yeah. on this earth that he placed me on? Yeah. And when you said that our bodies are basically not even ours, yeah. I saw it as um, like enterprise like, or a car rental company, renting you a car to get from destination A to B and bringing back their car without any damages. Mm. And it's like, when we're just walking blindly, we're, we're doing damage to, to the community, to those around us, mm. especially when we're not speaking up. So when we now bring our bodies, when we have left our Ooh. bodies and you know, we, go, we go to God, he's gonna be like. What have you done? Yeah. Like, we're, it's, it's, these are damages that we're doing, that when we see problems and we're not speaking up, we're doing damage. <laughs> Even to the kingdom of God, by by because, letting those around us. Because we are walking in darkness. Yeah. We are walking in in lack of knowledge. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but it's like I'm so glad that like we're just all here picking up this knowledge and opening our eyes because there's no way, like you said, that I'm gonna go back mm -hmm. <laughs> and go back to to the old way. Mm -mm. That's no, that's a crime. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's a crime. <laughs> I'm looking at mommy's eyes. <laughs> but you I'm see. I'm for myself. Because she is thinking she is late. So I'm thinking, what is mommy thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, what is mommy thinking? Like all these years just working for the church, and I'm thinking here, oh. Because people know. have made church to replace the kingdom uh, of God. Mm. Because church is not the kingdom of God, especially these churches that we have today, they don't even remind you of the kingdom of God. You know, they're just doing the opposite of the mm -hmm. kingdom of God. And it's like, at least if some of these pastors won't use their resources to better their community, at least raise people up in the church yeah, who we do that it. will, especially uh, if they know the truth, but they're not teaching it. Especially those pastors who know the truth and they're not letting us know. At least raise us to change to use our resources to, to improve our community, to improve these issues, you know? I guess they don't know, really. Yeah. So what would you advise um, people that are stuck in such, a, in such churches that are more or less choking? Because it'll be, it'll be bad for us to hear this and then go back to, <laughs> to the churches that are more or less I believe there needs to be a clean break, but we'd like to hear what we do. Number one, uh, you can't be stuck anywhere, especially in churches, for the simple reason that you have free will. Yes. God has given every one of us free will. So you can't ever be stuck anywhere. Don't ever believe it that you can be stuck anywhere. That's number one. Number two, before you try to leave, Find out if they are flexible enough to receive what you have for them, mm -hmm. to be able to cause some changes there mm -hmm. before you leave. But if you already know that they will not accept and they will rather just villarize you, then it's better to just step out. But if you could still do something, it's better to give them the benefit of a doubt. I would say, having, I would add to that, having been through something similar, because you know, I, I only started listening to DSA six weeks ago, but God had started introducing me to 
similar teachings but of a smaller scale um, years back and then I saw this was incompatible with what was being taught yeah. in the churches. So I would go to a meeting where we were preparing the Bible study and we would use the manual, the church manual and Gosh, <laughs> instead of God's, God's manual. Yeah, and, and, and the things in the manual didn't just sit well with me. And then I was mixing and matching. I was trying to bring in some new truth with some old <laughs> truth. And um, it just wasn't working. At some point, the Lord just said to me, um, it's your choice. I've been, I've been a Christian for 20 years by that time. So the Lord said, it's your choice. You can look back at your past 20 years and ask yourself, what have you managed to achieve within that 20 years? And now you have an opportunity to make a fresh start. And uh, what have you got to lose, really? Because you don't have really anything to show for the past. So what have you got to lose? So I just made that decision. It's a drastic one. And it caused ripples around because people are like, what? Ben, moving no, something is, is he trying to go and set up his own church? What is the issue? Um, you know, there was there were real you know, ripples there, but I just had to go for it. And I just left. And and uh, then people were asking, what are your next moves? I said, no, I need time to sort myself out. So for two years, I wasn't going to ch any church. I just just at home, just, just listen to the word of God. And uh, so, yes, but what I would say is that, that that period where you're thinking about it, that it doesn't last too long because after a while, life will happen. And you're, if you're still surrounded by people who are all saying the opposite, before you know it, you'll shove the word of God under mm -hmm. somewhere and you will not take a decision. So it's important it doesn't last too long. Next. Okay. Men and women prefer to live for self than live a sacrificial life that is required of personalities. Result, okay, results, catastrophic situation. Wow, wow, wow. Men and women prefer to live for self than live a sacrificial life that is required of personalities that's required of personalities that's stop results full, full stop no yep. no full stop say that again men and women prefer to live for self than live a sacrificial life that is required of personalities good please girls you people are not sharing on my personal page i've told you people to always do that in the beginning not at the end now yes uh and the result of that negligence and selfishness is catastrophic situations all over the world. Yes. Result, catastrophic situation. The poor and fatherless are not being defended. That's why Europe is different from Africa. Because these principles are not instituted in Africa. But they are instituted in America and Europe because of the Christian information they went through. That's what, because the church was active and they brought those things out of the four walls of the church into the society. It's our own time now to now make sure that we bring all these values from the scriptures and from the four walls of the church. But we don't even teach them in the four walls of the church, talk less of bringing them out. But they must bring, be brought out by all of us now personalities into the society and be, be instituted as structures even in the legal system and the uh, political system and the you know economic you know situation of the country at large so that automatically everybody in the country will know that poor and fatherless and defenseless are to be defended either they are Christians or they are not Christians so those are just rules those are value systems and that's why we Christianity is supposed to be about. Church is supposed to be about. Raising up personalities who will defend the fatherless and the poor. Please. Justice is not being done to the afflicted and needy. No, I mean, there should not be afflicted and needy not being protected. That's what the church is supposed to be about. 
And that's why we're talking about all these NGOs and the civil societies. If the churches will not do it, NGOs will take over from them. We will take over God's plan yes. from churches. Wickedness is not being defeated. You see? Those are the catastrophes that happen because people are selfish. People lack understanding. They are, uh, they are devoid of knowledge. You see? Go ahead. Next. Next slide. Don't you know you are gods? In desperation, God. I explain to you what that means. That doesn't mean we are God Almighty. That just means we are in charge. Yes. When you are in charge, you are, we are managers, we are rulers. That's what yes, it means. Yeah. In desperation, God cried out. You are supposed to be God on the earth. You are supposed to be managing yes, the managers. earth like God would do. Like, yeah, that's what it means. Managing the earth like God would do. Yeah. That's what it means by God. God is ruling manage, you know, the universe. You manage the earth for me. You are my heir. Don't you know you are... You see, God is managing, is ruling. People say, okay, why is God when there is war? Why is God when there are homeless children and all that? You know, you must realize that the earth where we live, this is the only place where we're having wars going on. This is the only place where we're having homeless children. Mm -hmm. This is the only place where we're having hunger. Only on the planet earth. But you know the percentage of planet earth in the picture of the whole universe at large? Zero, 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 but 0.01 percent of the universe is Earth. Just let me tell you, let me paint a picture for you. You know galaxy. You know how many galaxies we have? Maybe we have 500 billion galaxies. And out of that 500 billion galaxies, one galaxy alone is 500 million times bigger than the Earth. One galaxy alone. And there are 500 billion galaxies. And one, each one of them is like 500 million times bigger than the Earth. Earth is nothing. And that is talking about universal. I'm not talking about the other stars. I'm not talking about the other planets. I'm not talking about just galaxies alone. So what I'm saying is the Earth is nothing. That is just where our own jurisdiction, that is just a little space, space that we are given to manage. But God, because it's God, he's managing all the galaxies, all the universe, all the stars, and everything is running perfect. He doesn't have any crisis. We are only having crisis where we are supposed to be managing. Because everybody is selfish. Everybody is locked in the churches, in some holes, selfishness, family. We are not doing what we are supposed to be doing. But we are already been given the mandate to be like God. Like God rules and manages the universe. You just rule and manage the whole church. It's just like you have this old house, right? This old house, yeah. And you have a room for your son or for you. But you are managing the whole place. Let's say your son should manage the whole little thing. And then there is <laughs> there's lack of order, everything is there. And he's blaming you for it. No, your own place, every place is order. But he's, you, I don't know if you're getting the whole concept. Yes. So don't you blame God. I am talking with atheists. I, I have a whole book written for, for atheists. For atheists, people who don't believe in God. And um, uh, there is the, great, the most famous atheist in, in the world now, one of the most famous is called Richard Dawson, 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 Richard Dawson. I'm going to write a polemics, a book to challenge him, a whole book. I'm going to write 300 page book just to say, uh, to dear you know, Richard Dawson and all those who don't believe in God, answer me these questions. Yeah, I'm going to face them. I'm going to shout it. <laughs> because he went and wrote a book. There is God is not great or something. Or God is God dead. Delusion, God delusion or something. So I want to say, okay, God delusion? You want to talk about God delusion? Let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to be talking grammar. I'm not going to call this scripture. So. 
I'm going to be talking science only. I'm only going to be giving scientific facts only. Let him answer me. Evidence-based. Evidence-based, yes. <laughs> yes, let's continue. Don't you know you are here to manage the earth on my behalf? Rule like I rule, reign like I reign. So when things are all out of order on the earth, there is war, children dying, it's because we are not taking responsibility. It's like that water. You have all the reasons that you say, God, come and give the water in my mouth. Ah, you sick? Use your hands. Don't call God to, to leave his own jurisdiction and be fixing what you're supposed to be fixing. And that's what most of our prayers are all about. In Africa, everybody is praying. In fact, 90% of the prayers we are praying in Africa are a waste of time. Make you know that. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's true. It's true. The waste, waste of time. Because in most of the, all those prayers, eh, he's asking God to come and fix <laughs> what God said we should fix. <laughs> He's like, come, please, come and do your work. <laughs> <laughs> the water. He's about to drink water. He's thirsty. He wants to drink water. The water they for here. And he's asking God to come and fix it, to come and bring the water to his mouth. That's what we are doing in Africa. Asking God to come and do what he has already told us to do. Then number two things Africans are praying about is that we are praying that God should do for us what he has already done. Mm. Only we need knowledge to be aware. <laughs> it's a catastrophic situation with religion in Africa. It's catastrophic, catastrophic. Dear say to support what you're saying, God has deposited all the natural resources in Africa. Yeah, the water is there. And then we're asking, we're in churches praying As for the, yeah. deliverance. Can you believe we it? have gold, diamonds, silver, oil, name it, is in Africa. But we're still praying for God to come and help Africa. I don't understand. Ignorance. Rule like I rule, reign like I reign. You see, I reign over the whole universe, the galaxies, the stars, the moon, the everything. But you are only little, little, little earth like this. Manage it like I manage the universe. Rule like I rule over the universe. Restore order like I do and manage the earth like I manage the universe. Bring order to the earth like there is order in the universe. Yeah. Why have you refused to act it out? Next. People have refused to live the sacrificial life of personalities. Who refuse to take responsibility? Personalities are responsible people. And to be a responsible person, you live a sacrificial life. But we want to live like animals. Who don't, you know, who don't need to think about anything, who don't need to take responsibility for anything. Yes. People have refused to live the sacrificial life of personalities who refuse to take responsibility for other people's plight, perish and die like ordinary men. Those people, when you refuse to become personality, you have the second option. You are forgotten. You perish and die like mere men, and you are forgotten in the annals of history. And that's why I say, I don't care how many children you have, they will forget you. Not be me alone will forget. <laughs> Not only our contemporary will forget you, even those children self will forget you. That's why you don't remember your first your generation in the fourth gener in the last four generations. You don't. Because that's just the way it is. If they don't live for something greater than themselves, if they didn't live for people and for purpose, two things, two P's for people or purpose. If you don't live for people or purpose, you are forgotten. You are going to be forgotten. It's not the cause. So when I said that in Africa one time, they said, Pastor, no, 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 I reject it. I, 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 I do something like this. Huh? 
Yeah, back to sender. I reject it over my head or over no, my head. Yeah, it will never happen. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. Okay. 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 <laughs> over your dead. Okay. Because they think I was causing them. I was just telling them the obvious. Go ahead. Only one option. Okay, character two, children of God. Next. Remember, we are talking about five characters that I saw in that passage. Yes. The first character was who? God. God. The second character are the sons of the God, the children of God, sons of God. Those of whom God expects much. Children that were not supposed to remain. Remember the, that, sto that story, or oh, we need to go back to the story? No, you, you could remember. We call them God or sons. Yes. 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 Okay, okay. Children that were not supposed to remain children in thinking and in action. Children of whom God expected growth and maturity. God waited they will live for the purpose of God, not God for their own. So that they will live. Mm. Yeah. God waited so that they will live for the purpose of God, not for their own survival and convenience. And they, they, they did it. Okay. A, a day is coming when God would stand up to judge those who didn't take charge of the affairs of the earth. See? Read that again. A day is coming when God will stand up to judge those who didn't take charge of the affairs of the earth. And that's what we are seeing in that Psalm 82. Okay, that day came, and that was a prophetic vision. When God was, was standing and meets his own children and judging them, and judging them for what? Basically for one thing. They refuse to take charge of the affairs of the earth. And each one of us has responsibility. There is no way you are sent to this world and you are here alive without a mission. There is, God doesn't send anybody here empty handed. Every one of us has been sent here with some burden in your heart. You like, you know, like that burden is there. That burden is there. You have to discover. And that is burden is a pointer to the sphere of life where you are supposed to restore all that to. Where you are supposed to bring the. You know, the, the heart of make the heart of God to be at peace. Because when you ch take charge of it, when you are bringing justice, equity, righteousness, and truth there, the heart of God is at peace. Okay. Next. What you tolerate, you accept. What you refuse to fight dominates you. Lack right. of the, what you whatever you tolerate, you accept. That means you accept it. And once you accept it, it begins to dominate you. Lack of decision is also a decision. Whatever you refuse to resist dominates you. Lack of decision is also a decision. So, for example, let's say whatever you tolerate, you accept. Let's go back to that. In Nigeria, for example, we just tolerate things. Lack of electricity, ah, never, ah. So we think we find an excuse. We want somebody to blame, ah, you tolerate it, it means you accept it. Ah, uh, bad governance. Ah, uh, ah, Buhari. Ah, APC. Ah, PDP. You tolerate it, it means you accept it. No water, no water flow, no water system. Ah, this government, eh, is the governor. Ah, these people, eh. You tolerate it, you accept it. And what does that mean, you tolerate? Tolerate is when you refuse to resist. When you refuse to fight, when you resist to fight, and when people don't want to fight, they will just act. Okay? You refuse to act, fight. Anything you refuse to resist and fight dominates you eventually. So, for example, there is lack of Nepal. Nepal. You are not fighting against it, something, it will, that darkness will now come and dominate you. Water used to flow before in the house, little by little. No water system, but because we tolerate that, ah, oh, okay, it's ah, it work, it come you oh, ah, it is, they have taken oh, ah, it's kept up there oh, ah, it came for one hour oh, two hours oh, but later on, because you are tolerating it, you know what happened? Yeah. It comes up, come all along. <laughs> it dried up. Why? Because whatever you tolerate, dominate. Road before, ah, pot all now. They didn't do this pot. Oh, now you didn't fight, you didn't resist. 
<laughs> now I see some roads. Eh? <laughs> if I put on that day, the only only valley of darkness, the shadow of the valley of darkness, that day of that day, that day. Porto, okay. no more Porto, no. Porto don't dominate now. Yes, <laughs> yes everything is now Porto. There are no road left, only Porto. <laughs> Why? Anything you refuse to resist and fight against, yes. when you just dominate it, I mean, to tolerate it, you will not know, but it will come and then co totally come and take over and dominate. Anything you tolerate. Anything you resist to fight, you tolerate. And when you tolerate, it dominates you. Because you don't want to fight. So that's why personalities fight for something. All the time they are fighting for something. But you know what? When you come to church, you know what they tell you? They say, ah, don't worry. You believe God. Now you, are no, you don't have problem. Now all the problem will be gone. We just pray everything will be okay. No. That's why God has made life in such a way that you will never overcome all problems. All the problems will not disappear, never. You don't, we want to, you don't want, you pray, they pray for you, they pour, you know. But when you just overcome one, another one just got power. When you just overcome one, another one just got power. Why? Because God makes us fighters. God wants us to always fight for something, to always fight, stand for something, to always resist something. But not fighting things that come to you by default, you know. You know, because of your negligence or something. But you should be fighting for a cause. You should be offensive. You should be fighting for a cause, live for a cause. That is the kind of fight you are supposed to be fighting. Not the fighting of cancer that you, because you didn't show initiative. You are supposed to be fighting for justice, fighting for equity, fighting for truth, fighting for righteousness, leading the way, defending the poor, the fatherless, the widow. That is the kind of lifestyle everybody is supposed to be having. You see? But today in Christianity, they think that no, uh, God is going to fight for you, don't worry. You just go and pray. Go to night video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, ignorance, eh? Nabati, no. <laughs> By refusing to judge the wickedness of the earth, you see? People are actually exercising another kind of judgment. The unjust judgment and the permissive judgment. When we refuse to actively fight wickedness, when we refuse to actively judge wickedness, we're actually siding with, with the wicked and the unjust. We are promoting wickedness and unjust through our permissiveness and through our lack of action. By lack of action you, you know, against wickedness, we are promoting wickedness. By lack of action against unjust, we are promoting injustice. Okay. Next. Every time you do a good deed, you shine the light a little farther into the dark. And the thing is, when you are gone, that light is going to keep shining on, pushing the shadows back. Charles Delint. Beautiful. Can you say that again? Every time you do a good deed, you shine the light a little farther into the dark. And the thing is, when you are gone, that light is going to keep shining on, pushing the shadows back. You remember the two Ps? When you live for people and for purpose, you see? Even when you are gone, that line that you have shined, it keeps on shining, pushing back shadows. So it is not about what we are able to accomplish, but what we are able to trigger. Trigger something with your life. Use your life to set something in motion. You know, trigger is like a uh, locomotive. You know locomotive train. If you put them on the rail, and you just put, let it just be going, you don't need to sit down there and be living. You just trigger it. The thing is already there. So it is not what we do. I will, what we are able to accomplish by ourselves alone. But let's trigger something. Let's trigger this movement. It's just like this, you know, my crusade against the abuse of tithe, prostitution of tithe and offering. Eh? I started it. I'm not talking about that again. I moved on. I've, I've, after that, I've spoken about cult. After that, I've spoken about no, no truth. After that, I've spoken about paganism. After that, I've spoken of you know, I, I keep on going. But I've triggered it. Now that the freeze, 
It's, you, so it's not about what you are able to do by yourself. Trigger something. Send something in motion. And when we are gone, that light will keep on shining. Next slide. Failure of men to become gods. Global shaking. You see, when we fail to act, to take responsibility, to bring justice, <laughs> you know. Global see, shaking. The shaking of everything. It could be economy, it could be social life, it could be children, it could be war. You see, why is that what? Because some sons are not taking responsibility when they were supposed to. Why those children out of school? Because some sons are not doing what they're supposed to. So global shaking. Collapse of structures and systems. You see? In my country, because all the people who are supposed to be building the structures and systems, you know where they are? They are in churches doing night video. <laughs> and hallelujah night. You know, when I began to talk about that hallelujah something, they were thinking that this, in fact, some people just left my platform altogether and they said, ah, this one is too much, Jale. I told you, I don't even see. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so now, praise and worship is bad. <laughs> so they said, this is bad. We don't even know what it was. Eh? And I was telling them, please, take your time. Give me benefit of a doubt. Don't just be annoying and go. But uh, people are impulsive. <laughs> But they are not getting what I try, I try, try to explain what I'm trying to say, but ah, how can some praise and worship to worship God be bad? In fact, some Christians now, they have gotten to this, the Americans, because they don't have anything to do. So they are now saying, you know what they will tell you? They will say, we are created to sing praise and worship, to worship God. And when they talk about worship God, they are not telling you worshiping God through righteousness. True justice, true. Uh, uh, so when they are talking about worshiping God, that we are created to worship God, they are only thinking about singing. You know, can you believe it? So some Christians. So we have a whole generation of Christians that believe that we are created to worship God. I too believe we are supposed to worship God, but not singing, because the first time worship was used was Abraham taking his son Isaac to sacrifice. Worshipping God is sacrificial lifestyle every day to accomplish the will of God. So um, Abraham wanted to accomplish God's will, which was to go and sacrifice his son. Through sac it was sacrificing. So uh, to worship means bringing together the will of God that is in heaven on the earth through daily sacrifice. Sacrificing yourself, you know, using your energy and all that. Sacrifice lifestyle. That is worship. But today, uh, this is that day. This is that day that, that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Ooh, just. Then I started seeing some horrible, horrible things that started to happen. Even today, I saw it. You know, we will have some men. I mean, this is disgusting. In fact, by the time I said, thank God you have not, God has not allowed me to live. Because when I get to Nigeria, I am going to go to court. I am going to seek a way to redress that. I want to ban that dancing they are doing. Some men, some women will be doing, shaking their back style, and some some men will be, you know, you know, and they are doing that in church. Oh, ah, what? Yes. You didn't see the video I showed. I showed the video now. So, so yeah. They are doing shaking the backside and so that is what they are doing in church now. So and I want to ban it. Ban it. I want to see, and they are saying praise and worship. Which church is it? And all kind of churches. Any kind of church now is shaking. It's about shaking backside in church. And because there is no work to do. It's not church. It's cult. It's not church. It's cult. It's cult. Yeah, but it's cult. It's satanic. Well, it's called church. Yes. <laughs> Because that's what people are not doing. Because they think that we are created to worship. I mean, to sing. So they are now doing all kind of moves. Everybody is talking about next, my next move, right? Eh? And then other girls, other people will be around and say, hey, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, animals, animals, oh, animals. Because they, don't, they are not busy with justice. They are not bu busy with, with equity. They are not busy, with, I mean, they are not having nothing doing. Animal lifestyle, biomasses. And I want to go to court, not just to ban that, because it's dehumanizing us. Not just to ban it in churches, but I want to ban it in society at all. That anybody that will show those kind of moves and dance it in TV, let them go to jail. Me, I'm going to cause trouble for everybody in that country. <laughs> <laughs> they sing in 
in church, they sing in church, uh, one of these most popular. And they sing shocky, 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 shocky. Can you believe it? And shocky, shocky is sex, 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 sex. Yeah. So shocky, means. Yeah. Can you believe it? It is, and they, they, they sing it in church. When all these um, the musicians say shocky, 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 it means sex, 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 sex. And they sing it in church. No, it doesn't mean sex, sex. It means it fuck, 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 fuck. Oh, oh, wow. Pastor, that's too. <laughs> But you will see the movement, you will know exactly what they mean. Even through the movement, you will know exactly what it means. So please, the I beg you now. <laughs> I mean, things are so bad. Things are so bad. Things are very bad. Failure of men to become gods. Global shaking. Collapse of structures and systems. The very foundations of the earth are adversely affected. They die like mere mortals. Next. The master of the garden is the one who waters it, trims the branches. You see, it's not God that's supposed to come and fix. God has put us on the, in charge of the garden of the earth, called earth. We are the masters. We are the gods of the earth. It is the master of the garden, the owner of the garden, the master, the person in charge. Do is supposed to be doing the trimming, the watering, and all that. But we want to just pray and say, okay, God, God, oh, now you give me the garden. Oh, make it. But I've already given you the garden. Take care of it. But we are praying to God to come and fix it for us. Please read it again. The master of the garden is the one who waters it, trims the branches, plants the seeds, and pulls the weeds, and pulls the weeds. If you merely stroll through the garden... And that's what we want to do. We want to to stroll and go to work and come back, sleep with some two, you know, wives or husbands and have some children. I mean, reckless, useless kind of lifestyle. If you merely stroll through the garden, you are but an acrolyte. Yeah. Fair right, not so right. Yeah, that's infidel. You know, God. that's how people live. I mean, just irresponsible lifestyle. Character three, poor, fatherless, needy, <laughs> and defenseless. Next. They are left alone in their plights. These are the ones who are supposed to be living for. The ones who are supposed to be defending, bringing justice to, equity to, truth to, righteousness to. They remain poor where they could have been delivered from poverty. They remain defenseless where they could have been protected. They are left fatherless where they could have been covered. They are left without justice where they could have been acquitted. They are left in needs where their, their needs could have been met. There is nothing for me to say here. Just go yes. to Africa. Just go to Africa. Economy, politics, social life, everything out of order because personalities are not available to fix them. We should be remembered for the things we do. The things we do are the most important things of all. They are more important than what we say or what we look, <laughs> we look like. <laughs> and people today, they want to look like something and they think that is more important. How they look. I mean, in, Af in Africa today, so they call something packaging. I mean, you see pastors, eh? I mean, the people like that, uh, or Yaki Lome, or whatever kind of color. He has just brought, he has just brought the influence of, you know, I mean, he has just brought so much destruction to that country. I mean, he has, he has influenced a whole generation of people who just want to think about Jerry Coyle and their looks. So they now think, that's not bad. You could still look okay if you are living for, if you put justice and those things ahead. But now it is all about packaging. So people who have nothing, who don't have content, they want to have looks. And you don't have, you don't have the right to have looks if you don't have content. Your look is supposed to manifest who you are inside. Nobody is telling them that. If you don't have content, why do you have look? It's useless. Because you will be, it will be busted one time. It will, it will bust one time. Because it will, the truth will come out. That you don't, you are not in accordance to who you are inside. 
if I look the way I look, it's because it's reflecting something. But if you are nothing inside, no value systems, and you are just about packaging, that's what our country has become. Emptiness. You are packaging emptiness. Lee, make you read. We should be remembered for the things we do. The things we do are the most important things of all. They are more important than what we say or what we look like. The things we do outlast our mortality. The things we do are like monuments that people build to honor heroes after they've died. They are like the pyramids that the Egyptians built to honor the, the pharaohs. Only instead of being made out of stone, they are made out of the memories people have of you. That's why our deeds are like your monuments. Built with memories instead of with stone. RJ Palacio. We are all alive to make the life of somebody better. We are not created to live for ourselves. You are only human to the extent you serve others. You are only human to the extent you serve and live for others. PP, people of purpose. We should all aspire not just to live an ordinary life, but the extraordinary life, the life of a personality. Next. Character four, the wicked. The wicked stands for everything, injustice, oppression, poverty, represents affliction, no, lack of justice, okay. Need, needs, fatherlessness. Fatherless, fatherlessness, lack of defense, vulnerability, etc. That, that's just your failure to provide those things qualifies you to be wicked. You are on the side of the oppressor. If you are not providing solution, you remember the three sons of uh, Adam. Adam. Yeah, go ahead. God sends everyone who refuses to live for them, themselves. Okay, everyone who refuses, sorry. God sends everyone who refuses to live for themselves. Embrace, God can only no, no. use, God can only trust and send people who refuse to live for themselves. Mm -hmm. People who embrace the life of service. People who live sacrificial lifestyle. People who are personalities. Those who make a difference in the life of others. Like this lady, for example. She was nobody. The Danish girl that married the Nigerian. She moved to Nigeria, Nigeria because she married. And she was just like patu, you know, hippie kind of girl. But because she saw some a children dying in the street, I mean, and from her culture, I mean, you don't pass by things like that. But thousands of Nigeria don't even care. They just pass by anyhow. So she started rescuing, and now she's a national hero. She's like Mother Teresa of Nigeria now. Okay, go ahead. Next. She's not even maybe she's not even a Christian. Abundance <laughs> isn't God. Christ Christians are passing by. <laughs> <laughs> Going to church. Going to church. Yeah. <laughs> Abundance isn't God's provision for me to live in luxury. It's his provision for me to help others live. You see? God that's, the, that's the reason for prosperity. Every, all those prosperity gospel they are talking about. They don't understand the purpose of prosperity. God entrusts me with his money not to build my kingdom on earth, but to build his kingdom in heaven. You see? Randy Alcorn. You see? Go ahead. Next. When men refuse to pay their price. The price? The price. When men refuse to pay the price of becoming personalities, our earth is littered with wickedness, injustice, poverty, affliction, needs, fatherlessness, lack of defense, vulnerability, etc. Just because there are no personalities to take charge of those questions. God's yeah. own answer is let the personalities arise. arise. 
You can you now you can see the picture of what churches are supposed to be doing, right? Yes. I think it's clear what churches are meant for. Yes. To be raising up deliverers and saviors, personalities. If you are so touched today, what's going on? And I like it, and I'm happy for you. Come, share with us your burdens. Share with us your sorrow. Share with us your tears. So that we will, ha we will experience that same reality of what you are experiencing. Give her the microphone. I'm just angry at myself. I've been such a fool. It's such a fool. Um, in 1994, I came to Russia, and I came to study, but it was too cold, so I, I left. And, but when I was here in, in Russia, one day, 11 a.m. in the morning, I was looking out the window, it was snowing, and I saw a picture. I wasn't dreaming, it wasn't a dream, it was a vision on, on the cloud. It was Christ and three children. I was like, I was panicking. I said, oh, what's this? I wasn't sure what it was. I would look up. I would look down. He was just staring at me. Then suddenly, mm -hmm. the, it was like a stream. It just went, and I saw a Bible. He said, read your Bible. I panicked. I, I had this small New Testament Bible. I picked it up, and I read it for a week. I didn't even understand what I was doing. I stopped, as usual, carried on with my life. And. And for, for some years now, I, Christ, I see him in my dream. He doesn't say anything to me. He would just be staring, but with very peaceful eyes. I see it now. I can remember it. And he would just say nothing. He'd be watching me, and I'll be, I'll be panicking. I'll say, oh, what do I do? Oh, you know, speak to me. But the last one, I think it was two months ago, I saw Christ in my dream again, and I was actually, um, I was in a car with my daughter. We came to a roundabout. I don't know where we're going. Anyway, we missed the road. Then suddenly, I was walking on the street with my late mom. Then at some point, I didn't see my mom again, so I said, oh, maybe I was walking faster than her, so that I have left her behind. I, I turned, I didn't see her, then I saw Christ. As I'm talking, I was, I can remember, he was wearing, he had a not very long hair, but casual, a, a white robe, brown loafers. So he was walking beside me, so we're walking, so I turned and saw him. So he smiled, I smiled back, I said, oh my God. I said, so he was looking at me again, but these peaceful eyes. Then I said to him, I'm so confused. Why are you here again? He said, what do you want? I said, I just want to pray and understand it. He said, OK. We were walking. He said, OK. He looked up to heaven, and then he, he, did, he put his hands together. He said, it's done. He's, he's been done. I said, okay. Then I turned and said to him, out of curiosity, that when people encounter you, they want to see the, the, yeah, the mark on your finger. So he brought out a pen because he was faint. He circled it, he showed me. Then um, I got, to, and I was going to the village, my village. But suddenly, I didn't see him, I just got home. In no dream, I got home. And I saw my mom in the house and my brother, my immediate elder brother, who lives in London, but in the village. And I said to, I was excited because I saw Christ, I spoke to him. Then I said to my mom, oh, so how did you get here? And then um, I was excited. I started telling them what, how I encountered Christ. And my brother was laughing at me mockingly, you know, like, yeah, right, you, you saw Christ. But my anger and my pain is that 
I, 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 what have I been doing? Why did I not take action? Why have I not done anything? I have compassion. I have love for people. I've helped so many people in the UK, you know, personally. But it, it's not, that's not what God is talking. That's not the scripture. That's not what I'm supposed to be doing. And I just feel that God... But why do you think you've been a fool? I've been a fool because I didn't listen. I didn't obey him. I didn't, I didn't search. I didn't go for knowledge. I could have gone for to learn. And I kept that quiet. might be the reason why your, business, why, your, why your business empire collapsed. It collapsed. Because God gave her the wisdom to build. Well, how, how big was your company? We were in, for at least uh, certain three years, we were, we, we were turning over a million pounds. We yeah. had over 55 workers. In the UK. In the UK. Okay, you know. and, and that's just by herself, you know, she tried her best. No, my husband has come okay. then, so we're working so, together. So then, because, but she was supposed to use the purpose of wealth, influence, everything is for kingdom purposes, it's for this thing. And, but when you just live for your family, for yourself, because even people like, you know, Bill, 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 Bill Gates, Matt Zuckerberg, they understand these things. And we say they are unbelievers. They live for the kingdom purposes. We are the ones who are selfish. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank God. Thank God that I found. The day I spoke to him, I said to him, where have you been all my life? That was what I said. He said, it's OK. I, I, I just hope it's not too late for me. And that I will not die until I fulfill my purpose Amen. on earth. <laughs> Character five, ordinary men, mere mortals. Next. God himself is a supernatural God, so we should live a super life. A life out of the ordinary, a life of more than enough, a life of great adventures, a life of worthy goals, a life that makes a difference, a life of a deliverer, a life of a personality when we don't die like mere mortals. Next. History will judge societies and governments <clears throat> and their institutions not by how big they are or how well they serve. They serve the rich and the powerful, but by how effectively they respond to the needs of the poor and the helpless. Caesar Chavez. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Next. When children of God are unwilling to pay the price and become personalities, it grieves the heart of God. We are supposed to be gods among people because we take responsibilities for the earth. If not, we live ordinary life life of mere mortals. Next. The only alternative, die the death of mere mortals. <laughs> you have refused to see and walk in your authority. You did not carry out the function of a defender of the defenseless, representatives of celestial justice. In such a case, you are reduced from the level of gods to the level of ordinary men. That's what has been happening to all of us, to the church. Next. To fulfill God's expectations of running the earth, you must mature, grow, become personalities. Next. Genesis 1, verses 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. This verse reveals to us God's intentions in relations to man. Man was, sent, man was not sent to the earth to be a weakling, a puppet, 
marionette and figurehead. Man is supposed to be in charge of the earth. God created man for dominion, but not over one another. Men are supposed to be personalities that take charge. Men have to know who they are. Stand up for hypocrisy. If you don't, the hypocrites will teach. <laughs> Stand up for ignorance because if you don't. Not for, so two, sorry, you sorry. Stand up to hypocrisy. If you don't, the hypocrites will teach. Stand up to ignorance because if you don't, the ignorance will run free to spread ignorance like a disease. Mm -hmm. Stand up for truth. If you don't, then there is no truth to your existence. If you don't, if you don't stand up for all that is right, then understand that you are part of the reason why there is so much wrong in the world. Yeah. Susie Kazim. Who is she? I think she, she's a, maybe she's a writer or something. I don't even remember. Can you read it again? Stand up to hypocrisy. If you don't, the hypocrites will teach. Stand up to ignorance. Because if you don't, the ignorant will run free to spread ignorance like a disease. Stand up for truth. If you don't, then there is no truth to your existence. If you don't stand up for all that is right, then understand that you are part of the reason why there is so much wrong in the world. Susie Kazim. 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 Next. There are processes in every achievement. There will be stages whereby the young must grow. There must be stages of apprenticeship. There must be stages of sons, fathers, daughters, and mother. These stages are to be viewed in the context that Peop that people in the lower levels are evolving into the fullness of their potentials. Next. To grow. Yes. We must help people to evolve. The main lesson. Not keep them down. The main lesson, all men must be taught to become personalities that rule and manage his own land of promise. Their own land of promise, yeah. Okay. Responsibility. Responsibility should be our second nature. Personalities are supposed to take responsibility for their land and society. Responsibility starts with me. Next. Why we must embrace the challenge of becoming personalities. We are not living in a perfect world. We live among men who have been robbed and deprived of their dignity and self-esteem. We have the poor, the oppressed, the homeless, the fatherless, and the destitute. Next. If you want your prayers answered, you get off your knees and do the one thing you're praying, someone else will do for you. <laughs> she will, I don't got you. <laughs> Shannon L. Alda. Read it again. If you want your prayers answered, you get off your knees and do the one thing you are praying someone else will do for you. That's why I wrote that book, Only God Can Save Nigeria, What It Means. It's a leaf. Next. What does God think of you? Is he rejoicing as he looks at how you are living your life right now? Or is he disillusioned? Or are you among the potential gods that will die as ordinary men? What will your legacy be? That of an accomplished personality or that of a weakling marionette that never left any mark 
of their visit to the planet Earth? <laughs> Next. <laughs> Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. John Wesley. Next. I pray and hope that this teaching plays a role in raising sons back to God, of whom he would be proud of, sons who will pay the price of becoming real personalities for God, sons who will take full responsibility to ruling and managing the planet for God, men and women who will not close their eyes to the destitute of their age, men and women who will bring justice, truth, and equity to the needy in their world. May you will, may you will, may you, may you be one of them. Okay, we have five minutes for anybody who wants to comment or Mrs. Bizola, what will you say? Abiola, what will you say? You are fine? Yes. Or anybody wants to say anything? Can we get this book before you go, please? <laughs> it's on Amazon now. It's on Amazon. This is very good. Yes. It's on Amazon already. Oh. You already bought it. Uh, heroes, uh, or will you be able to order it from Pastor? Uh, will Pastor? Uh, Menik, huh? Yeah, we need it for days. Yeah, but before if he's going on Sunday, is it possible? Okay. Okay. Uh, hello, hello. Anybody wants to say anything? Anybody want to share? Yeah, Shinwe. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. It's Shinwe here again. Um, I want to start first of all by saying that yesterday. I, I made some statements, which I'm sure so many people maybe misunderstood me. I'm not in position to start explaining anything to anybody. It's my life. But however, I need to clarify something. I don't have an issue with my husband. Just get you that. You said that. Oh. However, yes, yeah, some people didn't get it. However, I want you to know that how I've lived and what I've known is having a clash with what I know now. And that is the reason why I said what I said, because I want to understand how I can actually take what I've learned to actually look at what has been going on in my life and then ask myself the question, what do I do from here? And honestly, it's a decision I have to make for myself. Now, from everything that this slide has shown, obviously, I've not been living right. It is me. I've not been living right. Now that I know what God is expecting of me or has expected of me. The reason why he brought me here on it, he didn't bring me here for my mother, for my father, my husband, or my children. That one I know, and I know. But I have already done whatever it is. Call it mistake, call it um, regret. I'm not regretting what I've done, but I regret not knowing what I should have done before getting here. Now, based on that, honestly, I am going to do things differently. It might take some time. That's why I said one of the um, Messages that I love so much is about the truth, telling myself the truth. I'm telling myself the truth, and I want you also to know the truth. So look inside yourself and ask yourself the same question. Am I doing the right thing? Am I living right? Do you want to be fair to me or to yourself? If you answer that, then <laughs> you know where you're going. Do I want somebody to justify me for something I've done? Do you want to judge me? What is it that you want to do? Then if you know that whatever you don't want to be done to you is not right, then please make sure you treat the rest of the world around you the same way. That's my own, and I've always believed in that. So now I have confirmation from the Bible. I've come to see that this desire that pastor explained today is something that no pastor, if your pastor has explained it to you this way, please tell me. I don't know it. Nobody, most of us don't know about it. Because if we did, maybe we'd have done things differently. Yeah. We'd have done things differently. So now that we know, the question is, how do we cleanse off what we have known? 
and what is happening now. It, it's just a new, something is happening in my life right now. And whatever it is, I can't apologize to anybody. I'm so sorry I'm not apologizing to anybody. This is me. And whatever I choose to do, I am going to go up there someday. I don't know when it's going to be to answer for that. So I will take my decision based on what I know now and what I think God will ask of me. Because I am a personality. I am a personality, but I have not been actually walking in that line. So I need to make changes in my life. And that is why I said what I said yesterday. For those of you who don't understand it or who choose to judge, I don't care. You can judge as much as you want. And that's yeah, me. What about today's, anybody wants to comment about today's teaching? Yes, just have one word um, for Pastor Sunday. Please, Pastor, go to Nigeria and eradicate all the nonsense in the church. Not just Nigeria. That's it. I'll keep it short, but um, I, like my heart just kind of, um, it, it, it actually is grieving right now, and I'll explain why. So I've been to numerous conventions, um, RCCG conventions in Texas, and every time I will leave those conventions, we will leave with anointed combs, anointed handkerchiefs, anointed oil, anointed water, anointed CDs, anointed scarves, just a bunch of materials that were claimed to have been anointed. And it just, I had a flashback um, to when my dad was in the hospital last year and we would put all these handkerchiefs and all these anointed sweaters that we took with us to the convention and just laid it around him. Whereas those were materials. Ignoring the fact that already the spirit of God was in, the, in that room, we replaced the Spirit of God with materials. We wrapped handkerchiefs around his wrist. It just, uh, it, it just breaks my heart. They didn't teach you trust in God, faith in God, who are teaching you paganism and practices that uh, are the direct opposite of the nature of God. And this was just God. last year. I was blind. Oh, my heart, it, it just aches. That's all I want to say. Wow. But now, compare what you have received in two days of this HMT with all those con conventions that you are attending. And you are talking about anointed days, anointed that. I think you are getting more anointed just sitting down, not getting any oil or any... Tell me about that. I'm just honestly, I'm, I feel like I've been blind. <laughs> I, all I've known was just materials in replace of God. Every time we, something happened to our, to our knees or any time we wanted to pray for something, we would take our anointing oil and just put it on it. It's like we're literally just replacing the image and the power of God that's in us with materials. What does that say about us as people? I don't worship us. I don't worship us. So we're basically saying that through we our actions. We are saying that the material is superior to the nature of God in me. We are saying that the man that is created by God to be the, to oh. be the Lord and of the whole universe should now bow down. We subjugate it under thick paper, clothes. Uh, you know, you know, trees and things like that. On top of that, we're, especially in, in churches in the U.S. or outside of Africa, we're always praying for the issues in Africa. For we're praying for new leaders, and but it's like we're Ignorance. not. Hours of praying, days of praying, but we're not doing anything. After All those we hours were supposed to be used to execute and promote justice, equity, either even by television or by writing or by, you know, you know, doing video or by just instead of wasting time to, I mean, people are on the mountains right now in Africa, millions of people, instead of producing things, making things happen. My heart just hurts. That's, it, it's grieving. That's all come, I want to say. Come, come first. 
better late than never. The good thing is that you are here. I don't know how God led your mom, but one thing I will tell you is that she had God. Because God saw those years of deception and depravation and decided to say, you know what, I see your heart is right. I'm going to lead you to the truth. Um, I still remember, I just want to add one more thing, but just all these materials that we're just replacing, like I would take these anointed combs with me to school and just be combing my hair saying, God, you know, bless me. Like, imagine, just foolish, just ignorance. Crazy. Crazy ignorance. If, even when oh our people goodness. were paganistic, when our <laughs> grandparents went to England, to study, no Christian, they were not born again, they were not Christian, they were just pagans. They didn't do that. They had amulets, but they didn't need to apply it all the time. But I didn't know that you, I didn't know those, they do those things in RCCG. I, 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 never, I mean, this is new I'm to me. Surprised, you know, I am quite surprised. Packages of cones. So you, you, I, I saw the video of the comb, but I didn't know it got so bad. Yeah. You people actually, ah, what is handkerchief for? It's anointed. So what? We what put it on everything that we. Put it in front of you. Well, it's no, it's not about waving. We food. put it where? We put it on anywhere that we need healing. We give it to others who need it if they. It's but just. You have kept it in your house. Mm -hmm. Handkerchiefs. Yeah. What were they doing in the house? Just sit it down. Just lie down. If we needed them, we just. It's, it's ignorance. Leader them for what? Huh? But does it work? Of course it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't the work. father died. But, pe but people still are doing it. Yeah. So when were their eyes Deception. Open? Deception. The father died. How many anchor sheets did you put on your dad? I don't know. About three. Three? Yeah. Two. On his wrist, one we just laid in. Ugh. I just want to say sir, that it wasn't that my hope was in those handkerchiefs. Yeah, but you were using them. But it's because and because I didn't know. That's what that's all I knew at that time. But you know, I know that can never happen to me again. Um, it's I think it's part of the practices of the church. I mean, that meant something. For example. If it didn't mean anything to you, I mean, I will not do that. And you, you will not do that anymore. Mm -hmm. But why? Because you are living in ignorance. Yes. They put you in that ignorance. Yes. And thinking that it meant something. Yes. And when but I they were putting you under. See, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 3. Can anybody open it for me? Or chapter verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 10. You know what it means is that, can you come here, please? It's like me saying, because God used Ephron to heal some people, and that was logical because there were so many crowd of people, and they were all pagans, unbelievers, and they couldn't touch and get to the man of God. So they just wanted, they just put their stuff, please, let's touch something so we believe. They just, just act a lot of it. So we are now taking that and turning it into a doctrine. And, but if you are a Christian, but those people were not Christian, God was not in them. They didn't know Christ. Because that's the way they knew it. They just knew that there is power somewhere that they need. So they didn't have Christ in them. But now you have come to God. You have Christ in you, in your heart. God of the universe is living in you. There's, I'm supposed to teach you that greater is it as it's in you, that's it as in the world. God is in you. He said, if I do this by the finger of God, the kingdom of God is in you. So if the kingdom of God is in you, and I still say, even though God is in you, this is the truth, God is in you, but you bow down. Can you go on your knees? Yeah. But put this on your head. It means that I'm saying this inanimate object is superior to you. It's above you. You bow down before this. It's the same thing as bow down before idols. It's the same thing as bow down before moon. 
But moon is even better. At least it's giving light. But this <laughs> is <the> same thing. <laughs> But just because somebody else touched this, because I touched this, but I am like you. Whatever I have in me that I put in this is in you too. But this is an inanimate object. It cannot be superior to you. Moon cannot be superior to you. Water cannot be superior to you. Or river cannot be superior to you. You are the crown of creation. He has, he has crowned you with honor and glory. You carry his image, his likeness. You know, God is in you. Whenever you go down like that, you make God bow down to this thing. The God that is in you, you brought it under his creation. You slap God in the face, pam, pam, pam. You, 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 you kick him in the back. You put him under what he has created. You useless him. You devalue him. And you made his thing to come upon the other him, or, 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 or on top of him. You don't treat God like that. That is idolatry. Where is the scripture? Thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, you see, where is my? You see what I'm talking about? What I'm talking about? Jeremiah, is it up to five? Jeremiah 10, three to five. For the customs, ah, so the daylight. She had put it off now. No, why should you put that one off? Why? Why? It was okay. Put that on. That was blue sheep, I just did like a taste. Toy flushy toy. What so? You say for the customs of the people are vain. He's talking about ignorant people, pagans. He was writing about the pagans. Don't be like them. They don't know what you know. They don't know the truth. They don't know that God is not in stuff. So he said, Hey, where are you now? Can I read now? Yes. <laughs> For the customs of the peoples are futile. You see what they do. One of them, a people, somebody, for one, one person, cuts a tree from the forest. Then the work of the hands, they then make that tree, make out of it image as an art arti artist, uh, what do you call it, artisan. They make so the work of the hand of the workman, because the tree is just tree. So they make tree into image form on image with the axe, but you that, and that's what they call idols, right? But you made that tree, you use axe to form the nose, the eye, and then you put it down. Somebody was doing that. Somebody called that tree. Somebody made that eye for him. Somebody put the oil on his head and dress him in some clothes. <laughs> and then say, you have to bow down to it. Oh, stupidity. So somebody put the axe on it. Then they decorate it, you see. Then they decorate it. All the address are like that. It starts from something. Trees, to clothes. Somebody decorate it with silver. Same with this. This is coming from wool. Somebody went to the bush, to the field, got the wool, put it together in the factory, manufactured it. Somebody did that. You cannot be inferior to this. Somebody, even the person who did that is just like you. He's a human being who did that. Someone just like you did this. <laughs> Decorated it with color. Sold it to the market. Call it handkerchief for aprons. You cannot be inferior to it. You can do the same. <laughs> they decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers. If it will fall, 
That tree will fall. That God will fall if somebody didn't fast in it. <laughs> so that it will not topple. You see? It is nothing. It's no God. It doesn't have the power to even hold itself up. And they call it idol. They say you should bow down to it. You can walk by yourself. You can hold yourself up. It cannot even hold itself up. And then you are bowing to it. <laughs> same with oil. Same with handkerchief. Same with all these things. So they, you have to hold them upright like a palm tree. Because, because they are just like trees. They cannot talk. They cannot speak. They must be carried. A human being like you have to carry that powerful, this powerful handkerchief, I prom you have to carry it. If it's so powerful, at least let it walk to you. <laughs> and speak to you. Then you know it's really powerful. Even when it speaks and walks to you, you still have to question it. Is this too superior to you? That oil must walk to you. Don't, why does he put itself? If I didn't he put itself in the bottle, why do you have to put it in the bottle? <laughs> okay, they must be carried because they cannot go by themselves. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, nor can they do any good. You want to take the photograph? You want to get a copy of this? No, 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 no. I, t I totally agree with you. But don't people think that it is the uh, Holy Spirit referable because of Paul and the apostles with their sandals? Yeah, but the Holy Spirit is inside us now. Because Holy Spirit used that. For, I mean, old Paul and the apostle used that for all pagans. That's why all those times if they were used, it was in the streets among unbelievers who Holy Spirit was not inside their heart. Now Holy Spirit is in my heart, so it's superior to this to the Holy Spirit that is in paper. <laughs> so, because, and the reason why pagans, because that's what pagans do. That's what they believe. So the pagan will refuse to believe that there is Holy Spirit in them because they don't even know. They didn't know that. So all, a pagan doesn't believe that there is God that is invisible. They need to say something like this. That's what paganism is all about. So when they came to Christianity, they were, you know, they used that, their old belief to try to, you know, minister to them. But we shouldn't repeat it now that we have come to know God. And that we, you know, then they, those same pagans stop using it once they have been taught that Christ is in them now. <laughs> so we, need, yes. we need to really be speaking out against it because a lot of, there's a lot of stuff. I remember when I got saved, um, the pastor was using lost soap. What? Lost. L-O-L-U-X. Okay, soap. Just soap. soap. Yeah. Mm. Bathroom, bathroom bathroom soap. soap. Yeah. <laughs> and praying over, for it, what? You, praying over it. And it's just soap. some part of deliverance. That's like, Toilet this is, soap. Yes. Like to wash your hands. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, it's not a white guy's church. It's not a white guy's church. It's not church. But you said all of them are pagans yeah. now. I know. <laughs> Even the oil, when they say, he that is sick, Called it somebody yeah. Yeah. because it's because they are just coming from the pagan. They are still coming from that hmm. mindset of the world hmm. where they must see something. But then, even when he was saying that he was sitting there, remember not the oil will you, but it's the prayer of faith that the person prays that will hmm. you, not the oil. Hmm. <laughs> yes. I was just going to say, um, this verse can this verse can also uh, refer to Christmas tree. Christmas tree is paganism, and I think. What but I don't think they are praying to Christmas tree, and they are not expecting miracles from Christmas tree. But these ones are actually expecting that this one will heal them. Right. They are actually thinking that this thing will give them something, give them that God will use it to give them something, that God will bypass him, his nature, his image, and go to the tree. I use the tree, <laughs> talk to the tree so that the tree will get you something. I mean, the tree that has gone through processing in the factory, that didn't talk to anybody, didn't bless anybody in that factory. <laughs> ah, he had gone to the magazine, to the shop, to the store. He was sold in the store. He didn't talk to anybody, didn't bless anybody. But now he will come and be blessing you. <laughs> Yeah. 
No, and um, I'm just, I'm just so filled. I can't, I can't drop the subject. Like, Ooh. it was so. We were just so blind that um, on top of these handkerchiefs, we had the picture of. I don't want to say. The bishop. Uh, you. You, uh -huh. Why? What's that for? And all these ministers I of our church. People like Oya Kilome, people have his picture in the church. Yeah, big, big picture like this. Uh, can you imagine? I heard about it. They will, it will go to church. You know in the Catholic church, we used to like criticize the Catholics that they had the picture of Mary. But we are dead. At least Mary is dead. So we might be a saint. <laughs> but this one, it doesn't need to die. It does, at least in Catholic church, you need to die before they make you somebody. But this one is here, like Kuro Kuro, only is in Africa. So his power in Africa is not enough to get from here to here. So his picture is replacing the picture of Jesus, the picture of Mary, is now Yoya Kilomet picture that is here. And there's no small one. No, and all these, and all these um, And then now they take them to the rooms. It was in your apartment, right? In your house. No, in the hospital. In the hospital, yeah. okay, where the dad was, they put the picture of their pastor there. Of Jesus. Jesus. Whoa! Why? He's not God. The Jew. He's not God. Can you imagine? On top of that, what made matters worse microphone. was the fact they want that... You to speak to the microphone. What made matters worse was the fact that a lot of these men of God of, in our church and ministers and even the pastor herself came in, didn't say anything. Because the, that's what they were teaching us. They saw those photographs and the attachments. The handkerchiefs. They thought it was, maybe they, they actually... We, we were all blind. All of us. Even the pastors. All of us in that room. So they're doing it. All of us. Uh, myself. So they're believing themselves that what they're doing is good. Yeah, we don't know. Blind. I was blind. No, that is blindness. Why they bless the handkerchief for you to use Okay. It. Yeah. They're blessing it for you to use it. Yeah. Because they are the men of God. Okay, that's what they have taught. They yeah. taught that to yeah. people. Yeah. I was blind. I'm not even going to talk about anyone else. I, I myself was blind. It, it breaks my heart. What do you say about this? Sorry, um, my heart is just crying because, um, like I said earlier on, like during the week, I went to like a Lutheran church, so sort of like a Lutheran church, but I left my church because I didn't understand certain things and I ended up in these churches. Um, and as a result, okay, I, I'll, I'll just, I'll be quick, but one of the things that God has blessed me with, I now understand through DSA's teachings. Because of my sensitivity, I can sense the presence of God and it dwells like in the tip of my fingers, it's really heavy. So, throughout, as we're speaking, I could. It sometimes it's so heavy, it's so overwhelming that I just can't express it. So, when I went to, um, I don't care. I'm gonna just say it. When I went to Christ Embassy, um, they, I, w I was looking for guidance, and I spoke to one of the pastors, and they told me that um, you're going to have to. Um, listen to uh, his teachings. I think he's got a teaching on, we've showed one of the videos out here on healing or something like that, or the one that he transfers someone on the ch chair. I think we've seen it. Um, sort of like, anyways, it doesn't even matter. But um, they said that I have to buy this video and then watch that video, and it has to be bought. I can't borrow it from someone because <laughs> because the anointing won't be the same and <laughs> that way and that way that's how God is going to unlock this gift because they had told me that I've got this healing gift that's why I could sense this presence. And that way, through um, listening to that video, that's when my 
sort of like my healing potential will be unlocked, basically. Does he have to do anything with, nothing with God? God does he have anything to do with it? Okay. So, no more God anymore. We have gods in churches. Chris's picture and Chris's voice and picture. So I'm just really sad in my heart and I can just sense God's love for me because there were so many things that my spirit was just against and thankfully I wasn't there for years. I was there for like months because I could even and though I didn't enough, have... Eh? I had enough. <laughs> Even though I didn't under have the understanding, I knew that it was against my spirit. So basically how I left, I they had been discuss the original pastors had been discussing about ordaining me as a pastor, right? Ooh. And and um they didn't tell me about it. They, they didn't train you for it? No, they didn't tell me nothing. And I was just, a, I was just, a, I wasn't even a member. I was just used to go to church. But they saw, you know, sort of like my my heart that I, okay, oh, this little girl, oh, let's use her. She's so fragile. Oh, let's just, you know, let's just use her, basically. That's how I saw it. So what ended up happening, there was some conference somewhere. This time I hadn't been going for like, months. You had not been going to the church? I hadn't been going for the, to the church. For months? For months. Okay. And the reason why is because the last time that I was there, something happened in my personal life. And I went to the pastor to talk to him about it. And he told me that I would have to um, like sow a seed. And I was just against it. So, and he he didn't talk to me and or he didn't so you stopped going to church anyway. so i stopped going to the church and then and then um there so was a conference coming there, up there was a no yeah there was sort of like a um christmas thing coming up uh, okay um so i went there when i got there there was a new pastor so this new pastor she said okay tomorrow you're going to lead choir and i said how can i lead to choir two when i haven't been to the church for two months it just doesn't make sense oh. And anyway, so I decided, okay, I'm going to lead this choir. Afterwards, Someone has not the church for two months. after that, I went home and I spoke to God about it. And he was like, okay. this is not right. Oh, they push. They really push you. They push. They push you. So you went to this conference? So I went to this conference, got there, and um, they were discussing it. But I don't know. They at the end of the conference said no. It was sort of like a break. They had we had a break, and they said oh they wanted to speak to me. So these regional pastors came through, and they said um, oh uh, we have been praying and we feel that God is calling you to the ministry of being a pastor in your campus. Not to praise and worship leader. <laughs> no. I thought it was praise and worship leader. You are supposed to lead the praise and worship. Why should God speak to them and not to you? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I said, um, so and you've not been to I church in two months. Now you come, you have to be the pastor. <laughs> so th things like that really overwhelm wow. me. So I went really quiet. And then they said, why are you not rejoicing? Why are you not? Not been around to church. What about if she had been doing drugs all those two months? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Were you giving some big offerings or something? No, I was no. given no more offerings. Because they must do something. They just to because they thought she was sincere. No. She was innocent. Yeah, that's it. That is it. That's they need it. somebody and who's And that's what I was God. talking about when I was to earlier on. I was when I was talking about the power of saying no. That, and I said that because of this sensi my sensitivity, I nearly trust me. I know what I'm talking about. People can take advantage of you. They really can. And that's what happened. And it's just God's like love because if if I didn't know like if I didn't have this sort of like you know urge to leave I would have been, I would not be standing here today I wouldn't and you had not you had gone to that church even less than a year yeah and you are going to become the pastor in the campus after two months of not even going to church so they were forcing sometimes, me. Sometimes it's to derail our destiny. Ooh. Sometimes they use something to see into your future, and then they want to block it for you not to get to that future. 
Yeah, that's true. Because one of the pastors did say that, oh, I see this big vision for you. I do this. So as a result, I you want, want to exploit want to it. Yeah. Use it for the other advantage. Yeah. It looks to me as if they could, they could see something in you that mm -hmm. would benefit. Potential, yeah, yeah. yeah. Potential. Because yeah. that's your, you could feel something. I mean, that's very easy to transfer that into a healing ministry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because because healing ministry, no healing needs to happen. No healing is necessary for healing ministry. All you need is the illusion of healing. Illusion, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, thank that God God so set true. you free. Yeah, so um so they said, Why are you not jumping? Why are you not happy? And I said, Well, yeah. I need to jumping. speak to God about it. They said, Well, we've spoken to God about it. Ooh. So wow. So so you you don't need to confirm. And, and You don't need God. We did it for you. Wow. <laughs> wow. And let me just say, they wanted to ordain me in an hour. Let me just say that. Yes. Within an hour. Express. Within, imagine. Imagine living in your house, you're thinking you're going to a conference, and then you're coming back, being a pastor. Wow. And then a lot of people were just would, would jumping. Yeah. Yes, I was not the only one who got that that day. Some people were jumping, and I was just there, like, just really sad. And I didn't understand, of course. I just didn't get it. And these were like, they, they intimidate you because they are big. They are, they've got these titles, regional pastors, and. As a result, you're just there, you're like a small girl, and you know, you're so tiny to them. So they force you, and they said, why? Why, you know, okay, what if we ordain? I said, okay, cool, what if I go home, talk to God about it, come back maybe in a few months, and then, you know, we'll see. They said, no, well, how about you get ordained today, and then you can go and do whatever you want. You can no, right. if, if they were ask God. You, then they would control you. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's not a church then. It's, 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 yeah. it's an initiation. It's an initiation, yeah. yeah. It's not a church. Oh, wow. Congratulations. <laughs> so you said no. You said no. I said no, and, and I left, left the church that day. Well, that was well, it. Well. That was the last time Bravo. I went. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> I think my wife is coming to teach today. Yes. We are late already, a little yes. bit, but we'll see you later. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we, uh, we have lunch break. We see you in 30 minutes. We have the workshop with uh, Pastor Jose Adalaja. We hope you join us. So see you in 30 minutes. Bye.